Hello everybody, this is Jason Glatzer coming to you live from the Norwegian Championships here at Card Casino Bratislava. Today we have the six max PLO final table that just began and it's been quite an event. It was an 800 euro buy-in event with 259 runners to generate a 181,818 euro prize pool. The final seven players have each locked up 6,363 euros with payouts. Jumping up brass from there, including the winner today, walking home with 50,346 euros. Not bad at all, especially for a PLO event. We have quite some talent at the table, but we're going to hop right into the action. We missed the first few hands, but not much happened. And right away we see some rags coming in from under the gun. And we have a stay here with a decent looking hand, but he is in early position. Let's see how he plays this. You could see the blinds are 40,000, 80,000 with an 80,000 big blind ante. And it looks like he is reaching for chips. Oystein stay is opening up, it looks like, for 175,000. That is a decent portion of his stack, a signal that he is here to play this hand. But Haverstad waking up with the aces. It isn't suited aces, but pretty enough nonetheless. Aces and eights. And he does sound like he will be betting the pot, and indeed he will, to 645,000. If Stay calls, he is basically saying, I am all in at this point. Let's see if he can get away from his hand. His eight is pretty much dead other than connecting nicely with the king. He does need to make a move fairly shortly, but maybe this isn't the spot for the Norwegian. As this is a Norwegian championship event, all the players are from Norway. All 259 entries. There are a couple thousand Norwegians in town for the Norwegian championship with many big events on tap. To he is thinking things over. It would be for most of his stack. Meanwhile, Haverstad keeping his poker face on and he does get away from his hand. So Haverstad playing his aces hard and fast like you should in PLO, especially a PLO tournament where stack depths are much different than cash game tables. Has a big smile on his face, picks up the pot. Meanwhile, Oystein's stay is now even shorter than he was before, down to a little more than eight big blinds. This time stay should be folding. His last hand was pretty. He just happened to run up into a much stronger hand. He did get away from it though. And Haverstad again with a pretty hand. It isn't aces, but it is queens with a 9-7. Single suited with the hearts. I expect him to open from the hijack, sitting on a 25 big blind stack. is thinking his options over. Raises it up to 180,000. Hansen with the Kings here. Let's see what Dag opts to do. He just calls. And Joe Hansen with a very pretty Ace King Queen Jack rundown. He does have a short stack. Is this going to be his spot? He would probably be getting it in against one player, but let's see what he does against two. He may just opt to call as well. Yeah. 
as he will be playing this hand in position, despite being a short stack. You can get away with these plays when you're playing PLO versus playing Hold'em. But I think if he is going to play a pot, I would like to see the chips go in right here, right now. But there is ICM to consider, as we just mentioned, the top prize is 50,346, and right now the players are guaranteed 6,363 euro. The pay jumps jump pretty fast and pretty, pretty wide, but he does jam it in. The expected play. Martin Klein will likely get rid of his ace rags. Martinson would maybe play this to a single raise, but I can't see him continuing, and he does fold. And Haverstadt is out of position. Let's see what he does. The position may not matter if he decides to come in over the top. He may decide that he is far behind and give up on the hand as well. cash game situation he would likely be calling he does indeed pot this will likely get voice this will likely get Hansen out of the way as Hansen would have to commit his stack with the Kings they're not suited and as I say that Dag is counting out a stack Indeed, fold. And you can see it is actually a coin flip based on the equities. The equities do take into account the cards that other players have in their hands. But it is a coin flip, much like you would see queens versus ace king and hold them. Obviously, it's a bit more complicated here in PLO. But Johansson is at risk with his tournament life on the line. And so far, Haverstad's ahead, but the Jack connected with Johansson. With Johansson. And now, Marius Johansson does have the straight, does have the check mark, will double up this hand no matter what. The ace of spades on the river brings a third spade on the board, but with neither player having spades, it does not matter. Johansson doubles through Haverstad very early on the final table, gains some breathing room and then some, and meanwhile, Haverstedt is left very short on chips with just 385,000. Less than five big blinds, and when the blind level goes up, it'll be less than four big blinds. You can see the players having a lot of fun. When it is a Norwegian championship, the players typically have known each other for many, many years. They've been playing with each other for two days as well, many of which have probably been at the same table. Having a good time, but also playing for more than 50,000 up top. We have a few folds, but let's see what Johansson does here. It is uh, the cutoff. We do expect an open despite the five being in his hand. And it does look like he's preparing to do so, sending his cards in the box. Oops. 
So Johansson betting the pot for 280,000. Morton Klein, who's sitting on a huge pile of chips, is next to act, but he should be quickly folding. Indeed, he does. And Martinussen should be folding as well. So, so far, not much happening here. Stay can't play this hand. And does indeed get the take down the blinds, and the ante adds another 200,000 to his chip count. choking around with each other in between hands. You may not see that at other events where there's a 50,000 top prize, but the Norwegian Championship is something special. It has a very long and storied tradition going back two decades. Nobody's showing up as much of anything. Let's see what Morton Klein does. He is in position. It's not a very good hand, though. But he does have a massive stack. So he may start trying to push around some of the smaller stacks with ICM. Being a real thing at this point in time. With seven players remaining. And 50,000 up top. But does fold. We'll save uh, his pressure for another spot. And bolts around to Oyston stay in the small bind. Despite his short stack, I do expect him to play this hand either with a limp or a raise. I do not expect him to give back Hansen a walk. But a walk it is. It wasn't Dag Hansen, it was Meinberg, so I know I'm not going live. And right now, but the sequence that I have is not in order. Expect Joe Hansen to fold after Hansen also folds his hand. Right now, Martin Klein with the mystery cards, but we will see them shortly. We do not see them, but it doesn't matter because they go into the muck. to Langberg in the small blind no opposite complete. Langberg has the big stack on the table with more than 4 million in chips. Haverstad checks his option from the big blind and you can see the equity is super close between the two players. But an A coming on the flop gives Langberg a set. It'll be interesting to see if he can get any value. It is a rainbow flop. In addition to middle pair, Haverstad does have a gut shot straight draw, but not much else. It's not a monster draw, and you can see he is a 4 to 1 underdog. But we'll call a bet of 100,000 to see the turn. And already 440,000 in the pot, with the three of spades falling on the turn. And now Wangberg is looking for more value. You can see him pulling his chip stack out. 
counting up how much she wants to bet. The board got a little bit scarier from him, not because it was a three, but because he doesn't have hearts in his hand. He doesn't know that Haverstead also doesn't have the hearts. And that does look like a big bet of 325,000. Gets Haverstad the fold. And adds to his chip leading stack and is up to 4.7 million. Still a young man. Still a young. tournament director just announced that this will be the last hand before the break. It will be a 15 minute break. Let's see if it'll be all seven players coming back from the break or if we will lose one in this final hand. Hansen has a pretty hand from late position. It would be a prettier hand with PLO8, but from early position, it does go into the muck. But Martin Klein may play his King Queen 9 8 rundown. But Ops not to, it's single suited with the 9 with many more players to act. The trip 8 in the hand goes into the muck. But stay, who's short stack? Expect him to try to get as much of a stack in as possible pre flop from the cutoff. Boystein stay does put out a pot sized bet of 280,000, has less than that left in his stack. <laughs> and does get a walk. Steals the blinds, shows. I believe the ace. Now he shows them all, folks. So we will be back in 15 minutes. Thank you for tuning in once again. This is Jason Glatzer coming to you live at Card Casino for the final table of the PLO Championship at the Norwegian Championships. Jeg er spent på hvem vi egentlig får rundt filten i dag, om det blir Frank Løke eller om det blir Action Frank som skal spille. Jeg har fått mye kritikk nå. Jeg har en liten mentor, en gammel norgesmester. Jeg skal ikke si hvem det er. Han har sagt, Frank, ikke vær så jævla nysgjerrig. Jeg er litt nysgjerrig og er ganske utålmodig. Men er det en som aldri gir seg, så er det meg. Så jeg, i dag så er jeg klar. Det er, nå er det main event. Selve Rosin i pølsa. Det er her jeg skal levere. Men det er jo det er et veldig sant det mentoren din også sier. Altså, du vil jo du som har guts og, og, og fryktløshet. Du burde jo være den som dytter, ikke den som syner. Det er sant, det er sant. Men nå har jeg fått trent før, før jeg nå spiller poker. Jeg fikk et halvmaraton før nå start. Så jeg får ikke roe meg. Er det seriøst? Jeg har løpt ut et halvmaraton før start? Halvmaraton morgen. I går var det sånn halvmaraton. Jeg må ha det for å roe meg ned. Nå kan jeg liksom senke pulsen din, sitte og slappe av. Nå skal jeg kose meg. Det er ganske sånn friendly bord. Jeg kommer unna med set mot set. Jeg tappte bare litt over 3000 på det. Så det viser at i dag så er jeg, i dag er jeg der. Så i dag det kommer det gøy. Jeg kan i hvert fall garantere en ting, Frank. Du er den eneste deltakeren i denne main eventen som har løpt en hel maraton i løpet av siste 48 timene. <laughs> det er det. Det skal bli mer. Det skal bli mer. Jeg skal ha... Vi er ferdig klokka 9 i kveld, har jeg hørt. Hvis jeg overlever til det. Veldig greit, selvfølgelig. Da skal vi ha et halvmaraton i kveld nå. Så du tar et før og et etter? Ja, et halvt. Så da blir det et helt i navn. <laughs> og du har en mentor du ikke vil si hvem er. Hvem er det? Det er Stian Johansen. <laughs> det er veldig bra. Ja. Og han, han er jo norgesmester i 2008. Han lever på den enda. Han er en gammel slugger som står ute og røyker nå. Han. Og han har lovet at hvis begge vi to går til dag to, så skal han være med på trening i morgen. For første gang på 15 år. Det blir gøy. Og hvis Stian Johansen kommer seg gjennom en halvmaraton, så tror jeg det er det største sjokket vi får i året til henne.
dag to, så det er ikke sikkert at Ellingsberg har spilt mot Jørgen før. Så kanskje ikke den turneringen, kanskje aldri tidligere heller. Og når det kommer en mann med gigantstekk og setter seg ned ved siden av deg, og du ikke har noe informasjon om hvordan den spilleren spiller, da gjelder det. Og da har du ikke så mye, mye du kan, det er vanskelig å henge kna, og der kommer det et syn, og da taper Jørgen. Enningsberg opp på 703 000, Jørgen ned på 620 og fikk en litt dårlig start på dagen, dessverre Vendy, som skriver «Hei, jeg gjør du» i chatten. Ja, hørte Jørgen du, han skjønte hva han var opp mot, han annonserte det at det tok bare «Ja, dine er en han på forløp i dag», men han får seg nok kjapt litt live-erfaring, han og det kommer nok dit, det der også, men erfaringen er nøkkelen her også. Operasjon i SFAR på TV-bordet til nå. SS 9-5 for Jørgen. Da skal det åpnes til 70 000. Jeg ser at han går mye høyere enn det Karlsen gjorde. Da har man ACES. Andersen 9-6-6-3. Tenker seg alltid litt om. Vangberg med dame og dame 10-4, dobbelt sut i Lilleblind. Altså her, han har jo spilt sitonger at han kan jo nesten sett mine ish litt mot nettopp Jørgen som, ja ok, jeg har ikke så mye nå Jørgen, men nok til at han kan spekulere litt i det, og det gjør han også. Da fokuser vi en kaster, så da blir det de to som går til plan. Vangberg og Jørgen og Jørgen. Og så er det sett for Vangberg, riktig nok ikke toppsett. Det er nøttfløsdrag for Tommy Jørnerud. Vangberg har jo også et fløsdrag her, så han elsker jo denne floppen. Han blokker jo fløsen til Jørnerud. Vi vet jo det at Jørnerud sin viss han skulle fylle, så vil det være bra. Men så har jo også Vangberg pågangsmuligheter hvis det eksploderer på turnen her, og det gjør det, det er all in, og syn, oppspill, race og all in for Jørru, som er i fare for å ryke ut, han har aces og nøttfløsdraget, men Svangberg er best med sett i damer, og det er en gigant pott på mer enn 1,2 millioner på steinbobla, og det er for turneringslivet til Tommy Jørru. De har ikke vist hendene sine her for å holde spenninga. Jørgen husker ikke hånda si helt riktig. Han sier han har SS og en knekt som ville gitt han en gutt shot. Det ser vi at ikke stemmer. Vangberg må være rast på å si at jeg blokker den striden før han tier. Men det har jo ikke Jørgen han... Oi, da får de lov til å vise opp. Han er sverre etter skjerri også. Hjerter eller S er de umiddelbare vinnekortene for Tommy Jørnerud. Skal Vangberg igjen slå ut Jørnerud? Han gjorde det i Level of Ease-turneringen. Da de satt hensøp på Gardermoen i 2021. Da Vangberg ble Norgesmester i Loe. Toer, oi, det er... Det dreper fløsdraget. Ja, det gjør det. Kun et S. Hus for Vangberg. Og det er en femmer. Tommy Jørnerud er ute på 30. plass. Og er da den siste spilleren i turneringen som ikke får penger for plasseringen. Nå er alle de andre garantert minst 1545 euro. Og det var, dette var de to største sterkene på dette bordet da de satte seg ned i dag. Nå skal vi høre fra Jørgen Sverre er klar. Og bare for å gjøre det ekstra ille her når det er boble, så blir det et intervju i etterkant også. Ja, det får vi stå ved da. Men moro lel. Hvordan vil du oppsummere? Nei, det har vært fryktelig morsomt. Det var jo full fest i går. Og når det går som det går, så får det være. Men er det ekstra tungt å ryke på bobla her? Er det gøy å ha spilt så lenge, eller er det en krise å ryke en plass for penger? Nei, penger betyr ikke noe. Det har vi nok av, så det går greit. Så nå er det nye muligheter. 
Så nu är er det bara hamra lös. Det är er ett av de vuxnaste bubbletunen jag hört på länge här. Ja, nej, jag har ju varit med i 100 år så bin där dåndat. Eh, vi så ju honna akkurat här. Du har ju ett nötförsedrag med Esparre där. Det är ju också men det är er inte möjligt att komma sig undan är det? Nej, den spelar sig själv. Och nu lyckas Petter där tre för som han gör så är er det inte nog för gjort. Lycka till i main event. Tack. Är är det fint i topp. Bare å sitte og vente da, men uh, da høres det i hvert fall ut som at han har uh, god erfaring med akkurat det. Vangberg slipper knappen da. Bogsveien får du muligheten med dame, dame, knekt 6. Det er mer enn godt nok å få blikksyn av Storbyen, naturlig nok. Karlsen med konge, dame 3-2. Fin situation for Bogsveien dette her. Men, som vi ser, så er man sjelden mer enn 60 prosent favoritt i pot nummer 2. Ja, det er uh, kanskje litt vanskelig å skjønne det da, i og med at uh, ja, skal vi ta, han blokker hånda såpass. Ja, vi skal ta floppen der opp til to S. Det er ok, to et par for Karlsen. Da kommer det hjerter til Svirian Flush, og da er det over for å magne Bosveen litt uheldig. Men, sånn er det, og det vet han veldig godt. Han fikk med sig en cash, og ikke bare, ja, og det er min cash på 1545 fortsatt. 26 spillere igen. Det er vel plasseringen han får, tror jeg, hvis ikke og grafikk var veldig raskt til å oppdatere. Det har jeg faktisk ikke merket til. Det kom til å sprang på premiestiggen her, Kjetil. Og til bordet spiller de fireveis da. Det er bra nok enn det, så er vi ikke kjempehappy for det. Men han har ikke mye igjen i stekken han heller. Jeg tror han også er i den modusen der, at han er ikke så veldig, veldig kresen på en hånd å gå med. Det har vært Karlsen som har vært litt bøddel da. Han har tatt jobben med å synge litt trollstekker og kall det rydde litt på bordet. Og så prøver igjen nå, ser vi. Mest da med 6-4, det er godt nok, sier Fenes. Og Karlsen syner med 7-5-5-3. Noen synes kanskje det ser rart ut, men... Det er det at Fenes har såpass lite Karlsen og hadde allerede penger inne. Og igen dette med <laughs> equityen, preflopp. Her ser vi 50-50. Det er 62-38 nå etter floppen. Ni knekknekt. Fordel til Karlsen. Kommer det en dame som treffer Fenes? Da snur det. Der er det bare 10 prosent. Og så kommer det en femmer for Karlsen. Han treffer sett på river og slår ut en firedobbel til Norgesmesteren. Og Hvor Arne Fenes. Og plutselig så er vi nede i 20, 21 spillere nå. Ja. Altså, hva i alle dager? Og da er det nesten to. Ja, det har kommet en stakker. Ja, nå er det, det godt du så det. Ja, for hvis ikke så trodde de måtte vente når de bare var halvparten uh, ved bordet. Og her uh, kommer spilleren. Uh, han er ny ved bordet, så jeg håper faktisk han får lov å spille den hånda. Selv om regelen sier at hvis du ikke, hvis du ikke sitter i stolen din, på siste kort... Uh, Deles ut, eller første kvart, litt usikker. Da får du ikke være med i hånda. Men det er en spesiell situasjon her, er at han blir flyttet opp. Ja, se kortene ligger der fortsatt, så ja, får du opp. Han da, har nok slår det gitt beskjed til dealer om at dele inn den spilleren han vent på. Ja. Godt sett, Kjetil. Akkurat det der. Vi finner ut... Uh, Marius Johansson er uh, spilleren vi får til bordet her. Ja, det er jo. Ok, nå ser jeg. Ja, sorry. Det foregår på TV-bordet med hvor kortet skal ligge og den slags. Så tenker jeg vi er i gang. Ja, velkommen til bordet. Nå har du fått din eh, første hånd som du skal gi tilbake til dealer, tenker jeg. Kan for... Eh Well 
Welcome back, everybody. We are live here from Park Casino, Slovakia, and Bratislava, as you can see from the graphic there, for the PLO Six Max Norwegian Championship. You can see the chip stacks here, Terry Weinberg, with a big chip lead over the rest of the field. There are a few short stacks as well. And here's a quick look at the payouts. You can see that everybody is guaranteed 6,363 euros that has reached this 800 euro buy-in final table with a massive top prize on the line of 50,346 euros. There were 259 entries in this event to generate a 181,818 euro prize pool. Not bad at all, especially considering this was a Norwegian only event. So although there are a lot of people here from other nationalities playing the open events, they were not allowed to play this event as it is a Norwegian championship. So Martin Usen, let's hop into the action with the King, King, Queen, Three. One of his kings is suited up with the clubs. Is reaching for chips. Has a 15 big blind stack now that the blinds went up to 50,000, 100,000 with a 100,000 big blind ante. Indeed, he does raise it to 250,000. So not quite a pot size bet. And Haverstad thinking things through with his ace, king, jack, three from the button. The two players not too far apart in chip counts. Haverstad decides this isn't his time to play. Let's see if Johansson completes the action. No, he does not. So Martinson picking up the blinds and the ante, adding 250,000 to his stack. It's been quite an exciting week here at Card Casino Bratislava with nearly 2,000 Norwegians in town, plus other people coming from other countries and the local crowd as well coming from Slovakia, Czech Republic and nearby Vienna. Players have been having a great time. Park Casino Bratislava is the new home for this year for the Norwegian Championship. And a pretty hand for Martinusen. Ace, king, eight, seven, double suited. It would be slightly better if that king was diamond or either the eight or seven was hard, but pretty nonetheless, raising it up to 250,000 from under the gun. So far, getting a few folds, including Haverstead in the cutoff. Hansen with a beautiful PLO eight hand, but not so good in PLO and only has half a million of chips. This will not be his time. And Joe Hansen also with a decent hand. He may not like having that four in there and does fold. And expect Klein to fold as well. Klein has one of the healthier stacks, but not as big as Weinberg's. About half the chips is Weinberg's. He is taking his time, though. And Martinson's turn to add 250,000 to his stack. Yeah, they're joking about giving a tip as if this was a cash game. Although I don't understand Norwegian fluently, or really much at all. I didn't understand what they were talking about there. I've been learning a little bit of Norwegian this week. I can't say my pronunciation has been top top, but we're getting there, we're getting there. 
Meanwhile, back to the action. We have Oystein Stay with the Ace King 8 8 double suited. Does just have 690,000 in his in his stack and is putting at least half of that into into the middle here, making a pot size raise of 350,000 with a little less behind. So far, nobody else showing up with anything they can play back with him at. Including Johansson here on the button with the Queen 10 7 4 double suited. Although it is double suited, he is also a short stack. Perhaps if this was a cash game, we would expect him to play in position, but not this deep in the tournament. And Morton Klein with the Jack Jack 10 6. Likely to fold as well. It does look like he takes a moment to think most of the hands that could be for timing. And you could hear the real cheer for Stay picking up the blinds and the ante. That was very important for him. He increased his stack quite significantly just by doing that without putting his stack at risk. Absolutely love the production that the shared hand crew is uh, providing here at the Norwegian Championship. Crystal clear pictures, amazing graphics. My Norwegian colleagues are commentating this in Norwegian as well for the local crowd. A couple of early position folds. Hansen is in danger zone. We'll have to make a move soon, but not quite yet. Not strong enough. Johansson folds as well. He wants those shorter stack players to go out, I believe, before he would think about making a move with the speculative holding. Holding down his six rundown, but expect Martinson to do something. Martin Usen with the queen, queen, jack, eight, with suited spades to the queen. Just raising it up from the small bind, and that should get the job done with Oystein stay fairly short and with nothing to brag about in his hand. You can see the players having fun, chatting it up a little bit in between hands. Smiles all around, despite playing for more than 50,000 euros up top. So it is serious business on the tables, but that's not stopping the players from having a good time. Let's see if Johansson plays this from the hijack, ace 10 7 6. Not this time. I expect Klein to muck his hand as well. It started off nicely, but that four deuce, it's not the right game to have that in your hand. But Martinusen, maybe we'll see back to back opens from him with the king, queen, jack 8. Clubs to the queen. And Oystein stay. Is double suited. But nothing else is really connected with his hand. Does need some chips though. So he is going in, folks. 
is all in for 740000 and this may actually get the job done. Martinson is priced in. And Martinson calls. So Oyston Stay is at risk. You can see that it is pretty much a coin flip with all of his cards live, both of his suits live as well. Let's see if Stay can stay alive. Not only stay alive, but double his stack as well. Or if he will hit in the rail in seventh place for 6,363 euros. Martinson though, flopping a full house. This is trouble for Stay. In fact, there's no turn nor river that can save him. It will be showers for Oyson Stay. He's already started to shake hands with other players at the table. It was an incredible run for Oystein Stay. But we are down to six players, each locking up 8,181 euro. You could hear the round of applause there by both players at the table and the massive rail watching this event as well. But well played there by Oystein Stay. He got to the final table with a short stack and we'll bow out in seventh place for 6,363 euros. The final six now each got a bit of a pay jump here though. Locking up 8,181 euros. And you could see that the pay jumps are going to go up hard The last board, officially, says that it's the final board now. I will continue to say that this was a very good effort on the final board. Thank you for that. It's great to have a second place. Of course, we want to come higher, but... Ja, han har kjort mye av dagen og spiller ganske bra, synes jeg, så da får han ikke gjort så mye mer. Og etter at du satt deg på det siste bordet her, hvordan vil du oppsummere spillet? Altså, følte du at du til slutt er utur som er den som ryker først, eller ble det litt bestemt av chipmingen etter hvert her? Ja, det ble jo litt sånn bestemt av kortet, selvfølgelig, og hvor mye man har i stacken sin. Jeg var kjort hele veien, så jeg måtte ta noen sjanser, og fikk et fint dobbeltsutt av Espe og Espe der, og... Når han åpner for knappen da, så er det greit å gå over for kassen noen ganger, og han kåla der, og det er helt greit. Gratulerer med glimrende innsats. Takk for det. Så du hørte det vondreffelige intervjuet, og nå har vi den offisielle finale tabelen av seks spørsmål. Du kan se Thomas Stacha, den fotografen for mange eventer i verden, inkludert for mange år på den norske kjempeningen, gjennom ting forberedt for an official final table photo. Speaking with uh, Frode Fergoli in the background, Frode is the one that puts all of this together, the master behind the scenes and up front of the Norwegian Championship. Thomas, the consummate professional getting players to pose. We have some smiles, some looks of serious business. You can see the bottle of champagne as well there in the background. Yeah. <laughs> 
So now that some official photos were taken, the official final table has been set. You can take a look at the chip counts. Dyke Hansen is really at risk here with just five big lines. More than happy to see Oystein stay. Hit the rail. He did ladder up to 8,181 euro. There's more than 50,000 euros up top. Terry Weinberg is in the driver's seat with 4.7 million in chips. Has more than a third of the chips in play. As you can see from this amazing graphic provided by Shared Hands. And it looks like Thomas is not done taking photos yet, but now he wants a few at the table. The consummate professional Thomas Stacho there in the background. So if you didn't hear that, the tournament director just announced that the rolling lines back to 25,000, 50,000 with the 50,000 big blind dandy. So that gives players twice as much playability considering it was 50,000, 100,000 with 100,000 big blind dandy moments ago when Oystein Stay hit the rail. So this actually benefits players like Hansen here, who before just had five big blinds and now has ten big blinds. That may not sound like a big difference, but in PLO, it's all the difference in the world. He does have some room to breathe, can wait for the hand that he wants to play. And you could see someone like Johansson, he may not have played that before, but he was thinking of playing it now that his stack effectively doubled as well. Martin Klein checking his cards before tossing them away. Martin Usson with the Queen Jack 9 6. And it folds around to the chip leader, Wangberg, in the small bind does complete the blinds. Haverstad with not much to show. He does have pocket tens, checking it back. But while I say he doesn't have much to show, Haverstad does improve the bottom two pair. Not that strong of a hand in PLO, but did actually help him. Nobody with clubs in their hand. But now there's two hearts. Wangberg betting his flush draw. Also betting because Haverstad checked that flop. Although Haverstadt does have two pair, it is a scary board with two flush draws. He could be basically drawing to a full house in effect if his opponent did have the 4-5. Weinberg does not have that though. And the four of diamonds on the river, improving Weinberg to the better two pair. But if Haverstadt opts to bet big here, he will likely steal this one away. There are better two pair sets and of course the straights on the board with a few of them out there. But Haverstad checking back, thinking he may have showdown value or not trying to steal this one away. And Wagenberg <laughs> extends his chip lead up to nearly 5 million in chips after rivering a better two pair than Haverstad. Mara 
Chris Johansson with ace jack 6 4 from under the gun. Expect this to be tossed away, and indeed it is. Worked in kind once again, not showing up in the best of cards. It was looking pretty with the 10 9 8, but that deuce coming in there as well. It looks like Klein agrees with me and gets rid of his hand, but things are a little bit different here for Martinusson. Raising it up to 125,000 with this Queen Queen 10 9 rundown with the Queen 10 of hearts. Averstad with better hearts, so with that Ace of hearts matching up with the Four of hearts from the small blind, but he may not want to play with the 4-3, but as I say that, he's reaching for chips. And putting in nearly half his stack with the 3-bet from the small blind. Hansen had a pretty hand, was perhaps laughing that it wasn't really playable facing a 3-bet. And let's see if Martinusson gives up on his hand or opts to see a flop. He may even decide to put Haverstadt in as well, considering the stack depths. Haverstadt would have less than a pot size bet if it did go to a flop, but it does not. Well played by Haverstadt. Stealing went away. Didn't mind having that 4 3 in his hand. He was betting his ace king. Perhaps betting the situation as well. Klein from under the gun with the king queen three slash mystery card. We do know his king is suited. The mystery card is irrelevant considering he folded his hand. Holds a round to Wangberg who is currently in the chip lead with nearly five million in chips. He also folds and now we will see what Thomas Haverstadt does. A6-5-2 isn't the strongest of hands, but he did have position on the button. Hansen, super low now. Reaching for chips. Is Dag going to complete a race? This looks like a race coming. Is going to fire out a pot size bet of 150, leaving 250 in a stack. But is likely to pick up the blinds. Johansson has an awkwardish stack to call, so even though he'd be playing that in position, the King 7 4 deuce is not strong enough for him to keep going. And Hansen's Real giving him a round of applause. Martinusson would maybe play that in late position, but not in early position. <coughs> Langberg, though, reaching for chips with his king 988. All four different suits as well. And Hansen, who just picked up some chips to get up to 10 big blinds, folds. 
would expect from what we've seen from Johansson so far to fold his ace 10 4 4. Indeed, he does. But Morton Klein may up the fan to play this hand out of position. I wouldn't expect a 3 bet here against the chip leader, but he could be defending his double suited king queen 10 3. You can tell that these are six very experienced PLO players, and you do have to make adjustments when you're playing PLO tournaments instead of PLO cash. You can play far many hands in PLO cash. Early on in a tournament, it can play like PLO cash, but as you get deeper and deeper, less is the case, and Klein opts not to play this hand out of position, and Wangberg is over five million in chips. For the most part so far, we haven't seen any wild stallions at the table. People playing tight to the vest at the moment. That may change as blinds increase. However, there is ICM to consider as well. style checking two at a time I typically when I'm playing PLO try to look at all four or if it's five card PLO look at all five but perhaps looking at two at a time is something I should consider but folds around to Klein in the small bind may see a walk here, but it doesn't look like that's going to be the case. And instead of a walk, it's a raise. And he may just take down the blinds here. Martinusen would be playing this in position. He is double suited. Does make the call. A rainbow deuce queen four flop. Klein remains in the lead, but he's only connected with his four. Neither player having draws. Martinson connecting with his deuce. And Pilo, neither player right now has a strong hand. And Martin Klein checks. And let's see what Ted Martinusen does here. Also checks back. And the Queen of Clubs pairing the board on the turn. Now Martinson has a flush draw, but on the paired board, and just a seven high flush draw, it's not a very strong one, and is facing a big bet of 150,000. Not that big of a bet. It all depends. He could actually be drawing dead here. We see that he's not that he's actually getting proper odds to call, but he doesn't know what Klein has. And against Klein's range, maybe he is not getting proper odds to call. But Martinusen will be doing something here. That may be a raise, actually, making a move. We haven't seen too many moves yet on the final table. This may be the first one. Makes a raise to 400,000, putting Klein in a tough spot. There's no way Klein should be thinking he is good anymore even though he is he'd be basically drawing dead if he put Martinson on a queen and does get Klein to fall Martin Usen making a move stealing one away from Morton Klein recognizing the spot recognizing the situation and everything working out for him and extending his stack to 3.1 million, putting a gap between him and Klein for second and third place. Still behind the 5 million of Terry Wangberg, but is over 60 big lines, and that's how we should be looking at things, not necessarily uh, chip lead, not chip lead, because there's so much play left.
especially with the generous 30 minute line levels. We're likely to see a couple of early position <laughs> bolts here. Johansson as well, likely to get rid of this from the cutoff. Klein may opt to open the button here with the ace jack jack six. It is reaching for chips, so indeed he does. A raise to 150,000. So nearly a pot sized raise. And let's see what he does. He just took one away from Klein, playing a hand in position in the binds. Does have a nice rundown. And does make the call from the small blind. And let's see if Wangberg completes the action. Is the chip leader. And instead of just completing the action, the graphic said he's three betting the 600,000. That must have been verbally announced because as of right now, hasn't put those chips out in front of him, but three bet to 600,000. That should at least get Klein to fold. I would imagine Martin Newsom as well, as he would have to play the hand out of position. And I don't see him blowing up his stack with a four bet because it would have to be rather large. And Klein pushed off the pot. Let's see if Martinussen is also pushed off. Martinussen did just push Klein off a different pot. But that was post plot play. And Wangberg getting the job done. And that's the power of the chip leader right there. Growing his stack to 5.3 million, extending the gap between him and the rest of the field. and needs to get something going at some point but isn't getting the cards to do it with holding from under the gun I expect Johansson here to follow suit from UTG plus one and indeed does and Klein who has just awesome chips and back to back pots once again wants to get involved with his queen queen 10 4 rainbow but this time raising it a little bit smaller than before. And Martinusson with the 6644 double suited. It looks like he made the call. We'll wait for the graphic because perhaps it was a three bet. Does call and Haverstad folding from the big line. So it's going to be heads up between Klein and Martinusen. And neither player hitting anything on the 7-7-9 seven, seven, flop. Klein pulls out far ahead equity-wise. But if he's going to be facing aggression by Martinussen, it's hard for him to know that. Neither player with two spades in their hand for that plus draw. Nobody with any straight draws. Nobody with a 7. 
but that is not slowing down Klein at all, betting 100,000. And Martinussen quickly calling. And Klein's slowing down a little bit on the three of spades turn. That would have completed a player's flush draw. Martinussen may try to rep that flush draw. May want to try to steal this one away using the power of position. He is reaching for chips. This will likely work with that three spade board. Three spade paired board, in fact. And does bet 375,000. Expect Klein to fold here, as this is a final table. But even if it was a cash game with deep stacks, I would expect the fold more often than not. We see that Klein is a 5 to 1 favorite, but Klein does not know that, and it's a very difficult spot because even if he calls here, he could be facing problems on any river. And Klein would have to just have a sick read that he's not super behind or drawing very thin. And well played by Martinussen, stealing another pot away from Klein. That's three pots in a row that Klein has gone involved with but was unable to collect the pot. <clears throat> Very talented players here at this final table, understanding position, understanding what they can get away with. Klein gets involved again. This time from the hijack, not as pretty of a hand as what he's had. But it looks like Klein wants to win one of these pots and is getting involved with a raise to 110,000. It's the same sizing he used before, before he was using a 150,000 bet sizing. Weinberg with absolutely nothing here, but is on the button. Did see Klein just lose three pots in a row. Knows if he's not three bet off this pot, he will be playing in position. But Hansen waking up with the King King 10 9. He's been waiting for this spot patiently and is able to get his whole stack in of 450,000. And it is possible, based on what the other two players have, that he gets a walk. But if he does not, he will be in amazing shape to double up. He'll be more than happy to get a walk though and watch his stack increase by more than 50% if that's what happens. Pine looks like he is in pain, wondering what he got himself involved in. Does fold and you could hear the applause for Hansen taking down the pot. It appears Hansen has one of the bigger rails going on. Hansen is all smiles as well, gained a little bit of breathing room. Dag Hansen has been around for many years, especially at the Norwegian Championship. You could see he's well patched up with that cool bet, a couple of Norwegian badges, and uh, a Nuts badge as well. Perhaps that is a local club. I will try to find out more about that one. But back to the action here. Klein playing four hints in a row. He's about to make it five, it seems, this time from under the gun. Slowly, his stack has been bleeding away. He's looking to reverse the trend with the 10 10 6 5.
gets a couple of folds and now it's Haverstad with the King Queen 8-8 eight, eight. from the button not wanting to get involved now Hansen who just got away with one before I mean he did have the best hand with the Cowboys has a gorgeous rundown with King Queen Jack 9 from the small bind does not wish the three bet here and that may actually save him does call from the small bind and now Johansson will likely be betting big he has a million in his stack expect a pot size bet with the ace ace nine nine it isn't suited at all but still Klein has been quite active as we just mentioned this is the fifth hand in a row that he's getting involved with pre-pop and does indeed bet the pot we will see Klein likely fold indeed he does and Hansen did just pick up chips does he want to put them at risk against Johansson here? That's just call. So that's for half his stack. A little bit more, actually. Perhaps looking <laughs> if he doesn't hit the flop or any piece of the board to save his small stack for another chance. But we'll be playing this hand out of position against Johansson with the aces here. So Johansson flopping a full house, and this could spell trouble for Hansen. It would be worse if it was two diamonds, and Hansen getting it in, and he is going to be drawing almost dead here. Oh my, I think he is drawing dead, actually. It is showing that he has 1% equity, so there must be a combination I'm thinking of. But Hansen at risk. Oh, running. Johansson about to win a huge pot of 1.65 million. It's been an amazing run for Hansen. Ah, maybe. He has a chance here if there's a king on the river. A king and only a king can save Hansen, but it's an ace of clubs on the river. Johansson improves to a better full house than he had before. Well played by Dyke Hansen to go out in sixth place for 8,181 euros, and the final five players have each locked up 10,191 euros. And let's keep in mind that the payouts are going to go up fast from here. Tonight's winner will go home with 50,346 euros. You heard some applause from the rails, some hands shaken by the popular Hansen with the rest of the table. And we also see a dealer change going on. Sist jeg hørte at du gikk ned var måtte den beste vinne, men altså bare basert på tidligere NM-historie, er ikke du den beste på dette bordet? Nei, jeg var best vil jeg ikke si. Jeg er short og jeg er ikke så drevne i PLO, men jeg synes det er veldig artig spill. Og må ha gjort noe riktig for å komme så langt, men det lyste lenge at jeg skulle være på 6. eller 7. plass. Jeg bare desidert shortest, ja. Noen spillere virker å alltid finne sin beste form når det er Norgesmesterskap. Du er i aller høyeste grad en av dem. Hvorfor presterer du så mye bedre enn noen av disse antatte toppspillerne fra ute i det store utlandet når det er nettopp NM? Jeg kan ikke svare for andre, men jeg liker turneringer med lang struktur, god struktur, god tid, flere dager. Det passer meg veldig godt. Som en god pokerspiller, rett og slett. Det er dine ord, så takk for det. Jeg vet ikke, mulig det. Gratulerer med en meget god innsats. Tusen takk, Svann. So we just saw Dag Hansen being interviewed after going out in sixth place for 8,181 euros. And now the final five have each locked a five-figure payout of at least 10,191. And Johansson with a very pretty hand. Everything coordinated with this king, queen, jack. Jack other than it only being single suited, but better than no suit at all. And indeed, we'll be raising it up to 150,000, slightly less than a pot size bet. Morten Klein, who has played many hands recently, only to watch his stack dwindle, will be calling. 
from the big blind and play this hand in position against Johansson in the small blind. So Johansson, although that ace hurts a bit, did flop a flush draw here. Even if he doesn't bet, I don't expect to see him going anywhere. But we'll be betting this out, and that should get the job done with Klein not connecting with this board at all. No real possibilities on a turn in river for this to get any better. Perhaps thinking maybe he can try to steal this away. It is just a uh, small bet of 80,000 into a pot of 350. It wouldn't have mattered, I don't think. If it was just 50,000, Johansson gets the job done just by betting. Doesn't need to complete that flush draw as he was already far ahead without realizing it when he made the bet. And the players have been having a blast, not just here at the PLO Six Max Championship, but throughout the Norwegian Championship, also the Poker North Masters as well. There's three floors of poker action, more than 200 tables here at Card Casino Bratislava. The atmosphere has been buzzing. And it's the chip leader Wangberg in the hijack with ace, queen, queen, deuce. And the ace is suited up with that queen of clubs, raising it to a near pot size bet of 150,000. So far, nobody else having something to play back, but that may change with Klein here, who has shown he likes to see flops. He will be playing this hand out of position if he just calls and nothing happens in the big blind. But we'll be raising. He's raising against the chip leader. Let's see if Weinberg decides uh, this is the time to uh, see if he could take some of Klein's <coughs> chips, if not them all. Federe Weinberg looks deep in thought at the moment. Despite having some chips to play, this may not be the right time, and he does fold his hand. So after bleeding away some chips with some uh, activeness pre-flop, Klein gets some of them back with a well-timed three bet with his Cowboys. And blinds have gone up to 30,000, 60,000. And now keep in mind that when there were seven players left, the blinds ran all the way up to 50,000, 100,000. But by the time the official six max final table began, the tournament director came and said, we're rolling back the blinds to 25,000, 50,000, giving all the players deeper effective stacks. are enjoying themselves but the rail over there I believe that's Oscar Wede in the background along with two other players but it's hard to see but Haverstadt with the pocket rockets along with the 10 deuce this would be slightly prettier if it wasn't for that deuce and if the deuce wasn't only suited only suited with the 10s does raise it up to 135,000. Johansson throwing away his ace jack 10. Morten Klein, who has the highest VPIP at this point at the final table, not immediately folding. This isn't the prettiest hand to play, it would be more of a positional play. Does fold though. It 
to Henry Weinberg holding as well, and Haverston, Haverstad taking down the pot. Unless a hand like that is really getting in pre-flop, it's actually very difficult to play that hand post-flop. <coughs> so I'm sure he's more than happy to take down the pot right there. Pause for a bit of time here with Johansson with the uh, 10 5 4 3. I wouldn't expect this hand to be that playable at this point in time, or really at many points in time. And eventually comes to that conclusion as well. Morton Klein folding as well. Now let's see what Ted Martinusen does with his 9764. He will be opening the button. Gets the chip leader Wanks at the fold. Likely will get Haverstad to fold as well. This isn't the hand you want to really three bet unless you have some kind of read. This isn't the hand you necessarily want to call, especially with uh, the rainbow in the in the hand, the 654 does connect, but I do not think this is enough even to call for an extra 90,000. And Haberstadt also agrees and makes the fold. Martin Klein, who's been quite active, I expect to see him open up this queen, queen, eight, seven. Even from under the gun, he is also in the hijack because we are down to just five players remaining in this 800 euro buy in PLO 6 Max Championship. Does raise for a little more than a min bet. It's Martinus in the fold. Langberg, who's been around 5 million this entire final table so far. Looks like he wants to play this hand in position, but may also be a 3-bet. It is a call. And Johansson has Klein's Queens blocked here. It's not that I expect him to complete here because of the 9-deuce. Because of his stack size as well. But it isn't the quickest of decisions right now. Let's see what Marus decides to do. He may even opt to squeeze here. Which would actually work out in this case. But he has no way of really knowing that unless he's getting reads from the players. That neither is strong. does call, so we'll be going three-way to the flop. We could see some leveling with two players having queens on the 4-10 deuce flop. It isn't the best flop for anyone at the table. We could see equity-wise, actually Weinberg is ahead. But nobody with that flush draw Nobody with any straight draws at the moment. So it's really just the over pair that's looking good. But Wangberg using his chip lead and the power position, this will likely get the job done. 
in fact, Johansson snap holds was a decent sizing as well. It was a quicker fold for Johansson only because he had Klein behind him. But I would expect to see Klein to fold as well, despite having the best hand at the moment. This has happened a few times already to Klein at the final table. Because even though he has the best hand, it's not that good on a 10 4 deuce flop against an opponent's betting range. But as I say that, he's reaching for chips, so maybe he's had enough. And any move he makes will actually work here, because Weinberg can't keep going. Assuming he raises and doesn't just call. But he is still thinking. It looks like he grabbed the chips just to get an idea of where he's at. And now he's shuffling them around. And does call. Very interesting. Klein may be realizing that Wangberg could be betting the button wide. But the ace of club falling on the turn. This could be an action killer. Certainly if Wangberg bets. Oh my god, Wangberg. Betting out big. Putting Klein to the test. Klein would have to claw off his whole stack and he snap folds the best hand. Well played by Terry Wangberg. Really a very weak hand preflop but was on the button, does have the chip lead, and then using the power of position, power of his giant chip stack to win the pot, and now has 5.6 million in chips. That's the most we've seen him at so far at the final table. When the final table began, players were playing a little bit tighter to the best, but now we've seen players open up with some moves, not just uh, Terry Wangberg, but some of the others as well. It is, It has been quite entertaining thus far. Wangberg going to open up with the ace, queen, 10-5 with the suited queen of clubs as well. Opening to 150, now let's see what Johansson does with his Cowboys. Does have that king three of diamonds as well. The connectedness of that seven and three is not so good, but could be good enough for Johansson to play here. He does deep in thought. I won't be surprised to see a three bet here. Won't be surprised to see anything here actually. A call or a fold. I wouldn't blame him no matter what. A three bet would be the most difficult thing to do. But Wankberg has a very wide opening range at this point with the chip lead. So Johansson should realize that his Cowboys could be far ahead of Wankberg's range. However, is that enough to go ahead considering how steep the payout jumps are for the final five. It does three bet to 450,000 and that's gonna get at least Klein out of the way. Klein would have called behind or maybe even jammed. It is a pretty hand King Jack 7-6 double suited but not facing a big three bet. And Wangberg folding as well. Johansson now making moves, getting the job done, up to 2.2 million in chips. Really enjoying this final table play. And hope you at home are as well. And there 
there's a nice photo of the chip leader, nice image of the chip leader, Atari Weinberg. Over in seat five. Next to the dealer there. Gathering his cards now. Possibly not the hand he wants to play. Eight, four, three, deuce. Let's see what Haverstad decides to do. Haverstad now with one of the shorter stacks, but still 20 big blinds in play. Doesn't want to get involved there, and who can blame him? Johansson, if he opens here, it's just using position. Doesn't want to risk it. And Klein is now the short stack at the table. He did play a few pots, did get pushed off a few of them, despite having the best hand, but not a nutted hand, and does give Martinusen a walk. So Johansson here with the ace king king three, I would expect to see an open despite that three in there. Does have the spades as well with leading up to the ace, which makes his hand even stronger. Ham would be an absolute powerhouse in PLO 8, but even in PLO, it is strong enough to raise, whether a cash game or a tournament from the cutoff. And Klein folding with his short stack from the button. Another pretty hand here, Martin Ussen with the queen, queen, 10 8 double suited from the small blind. gets involved with Johansson and their spades on the board though his spades are not as good as the ace three of spades of Johansson. It looks like a raise though so very interesting here. A raise to 500,000 that gets Wangberg out of the way. If it was just a call you would expect to see Wangberg calling behind so he's getting the chip leader out of the way but that may not be enough to get Johansson out of the way. However, it would be a quarter of Johansson's stack going into the pot before the flop. Would have to call for another 350,000. Thinking things over. There's a bit of table talk going on. He is reaching for chips. And does make the call, so we have more than a million in the pot before the flop. Johansson will be playing this hand in position and did flop the top pair. Neither player with hearts in their hand. Johansson with the gut shot wheel draw as well. This does not connect well with Martinusen's range. I mean, it does connect with his range, but doesn't connect with his hand. 
let's see how he approaches this. He was the three better in the hand from the small blind and first to act. But being that there's just five players left, it is a little bit of a risk for him to get too heavily involved here. But he will be making a stab at it. It is a bet on the smaller side for 250000 like a raise and indeed it is to 650,000 that will take down the pot unless Martin Martin Usen senses some weakness and wants to try to push Johansson off but there's no point in doing that he has a healthy stack doesn't want to blow it up right here right now and Johansson takes it down with the best hand but still uh, a scariest board for him to the winner along with the massive 50,346 euro top prize for this 800 euro buy-in Norwegian Championship PLO 6 max event open only to Norwegians 259 players turned out in full force to generate a 181,818 euro prize pool but back to the action Johansson with the ace 875 Tosses it away. <coughs> Fine keeps getting these pale weight kind of hands. Is short after being a little bit active earlier. Preflop was reaching for chips, but perhaps just counting out what he has. Even though we see everything digitally, the players do not. Martinusen, though, expect him to open the button with this jack, jack, 10-7 and raises to 150,000. The chip leader Weinberg uh, didn't snap fold his jacket to reduce from out of position. Yes, he did, and Haverstad, a very defendable hand. We will see some chips come in, either as a call or a three bet, most likely with the queen 10, 10, nine double suited. Both of his suits happen to be live as well, but does just call. And Martinusen flopping top set, but Haverstadt with a nice wrap. It is a rainbow five jack eight flop, so right now the potential flush draws would be backdoors only. You can see despite Martinusen flopping the goods here with top set, is only a three to two favorite over at Haverstad with a little bit of a wrap and Martin Usen after it being checked over by Haverstad that's small 100,000 into a pot of 390 and let's see how Haverstad plays this I do not think he will be mucking his cards I think it's a question of whether he's going to call or raise his hand is way too strong at this point Even if he is up against something like top set, he does have a ton of equity here. And although the two of clubs did not connect for his straight, it does add a flush draw. So you can see the equity percentage is barely changed. Have her stat checking again. Martinusen may bet big here. He currently has nuts on the board, but it is a scary board. 
Steve. Sounds like Martinusson is asking for a count, and Haverstad obliges. Ted Martinusson thinking things over, perhaps thinking about how much he should bet. You do not want to be slow playing on this kind of board, though. And does agree. Now Haverstadt is put to the test. He does have a lot of equity, despite there only being one card to come with both the flush draw and a bit of a wrap to the straight as well. However, he does have Morton Klein with less chips than him. ICM is a factor. There will be more than a 3,000 euro pay jump between 5th and 4th. If this was a cash game with deeper stacks, everything would be a bit different. But as things are now, that was half of Mar Haverset second. Haverset jams. Expect Martinusen with top set and the nuts at the moment calling. Haverstad at risk with one card to come. There are so many cards in the deck, though, that can help him to stay alive. Let's see if Thomas Haverstad can get there against Ted Martinussen. The tension is gaining. A big moment for Haverstad. Either he doubles his stack or hits the rail. The two players standing by side by side as the river comes, and it's a king of clubs on the river to complete Haverstad's flush. He gets to sit back down instead of hitting the rail up to 2.4 million in chips. Meanwhile, Ted Martinusson, despite flopping top set and still having top set being good on the turn, lost a big chunk of his stack. A bit of a bad beat and cooler for him, but you can't blame at all the way Thomas Haverstadt has played that. We saw the flop, we saw the turn. Had tons of possibilities on that river. Gets one of the cards he needed to get the job done and is up near 2.5 million in chips with five players to go. And here's an updated look at the chip counts. We can see Terry Weinbeck with 40% of the chips in play. As we earlier mentioned, Morton Klein was the short stack, which may have been a factor, but it turned out not to be in how Haverstad would play that last hand. And here's a look at the payout jumps. Right now, the final five have locked out a five-figure payout of more than 10,000 euro with the winner later on getting more than 50,000, which is quite a big difference, but this was an 800 euro buying event, so each of the final five have done quite well for themselves. But not only is it the 50,000 that people are thinking about, it is the honor of being a Norwegian champion we know Morten Klein was a Norwegian champion back in 2011 in a limit hold'em event. And does wake up with the Aces King 6 as a short stack. Basically just min raising this to 125, a little more than a min raise. Langberg opting to call in position with this 10 9 9 3. Haverstad, who just doubled up, decided not this time. And Johansson with a double suited hand, but it's just eight high. You can see this going either way. He could just complete the action for another big bind, so I would expect not to see him fold. I also would expect to not see him three bet, so that leaves us with just a call.
indeed does call. So we'll have three players heading to the flop with 465,000 in the middle. And this king, king, deuce flop, Klein improving to trips. Nobody with diamonds in their hand. Klein opting to check as he would if he didn't hit it. We've seen him check a lot post hoc and it induces Wangberg to bet. We know Klein is not going anywhere. He is the short stack as well, but even if he was not, he wasn't checking out of fear. He was checking for this exact situation, hoping the chip leader Wangberg would get involved. And it looks like a raise by Klein It's not only a raise, it's a jam for a stock for 715,000. There's almost no possibility Weinberg will call here. Does quickly fold and Klein gets a much needed chips. And it's back to near 1.4 million. He really doubled his stock in that hand with the aces. He opened up with slightly more than a min raise got two players to call and then took it down with a check raise a check jam on the flop lines have just gone up to 40,000 80,000 with an 80,000 big blind ante so everybody's stack effectively got a little bit shorter players have been joking around before now at least for now it's all serious business with the honor of becoming the latest Norwegian champion of the six max PLO on the line along with a 50,000 euro top prize a little bit more than 50,000 that folds around to Johansson on the button. Let's see what Maris opts to do with his double suited cards. We know he's likely to raise. We don't know for how much. <coughs> it's a pot size raise to 240,000. I'm more inclined with a good double suited hand of his own with ace king 10 8. It would be a little bit better if the, ten, if the king was of hearts and one of the hearts was a diamond. But it's pretty nonetheless. We may see a big three bet here. So Morton Klein, who is down to just a few big blinds moments ago, putting the pressure on Johansson. And we could see some fun. Klein is technically ahead. And Johansson jamming it. Klein is priced in already. He went to three bet if he wasn't ready to call it off. And it's Morton Klein at risk. He's slightly favored to stay alive and double his stack. Let's see how this plays out. The formidable Morton Klein hoping for some red cards here or some other possibilities to stay alive while Johansson's hoping for black cards. And it's a black five out of the window followed by the seven nine rainbow. Morton Klein with the open ender. Johansson connects with the seven. A king on the turn puts Klein ahead, but there's still tons of outs as you can see for Johansson to win the hand. The Seven of Hearts River pairing the board. Johansson with three of a kind to send Morton Klein on the rail in fifth place for 10,191 euros. The final four now have each locked up 13,615 euros. The payouts go up hard and fast from there. Well played today by Morton Klein to make it this far. I know he would have liked to have added second championship to the one he won 12 years ago. 
but at least not in this event, but another final table for Morton Klein. He is sticking around, perhaps uh, wishing the players a good game, and indeed he is. And here's a look at the final table payouts. You can see Morton Klein went out in fifth place, Dak Hansen in sixth, and Oystein Stay in seventh place. There's still four players <coughs> remaining with more than 50,000 on the Martin, line. Martin, you stood already the the with a tag that says that it's a Norway master in poker, but the star number two didn't seem to come closer and closer in a period. But man must maybe be happy with River also. That must man. I missed a little flight now in the way, so I got a few of the best tenors that were slowed down. And so I won a few. Yeah, I can't know that. Noen få oats han har på river der når jeg er all in på en 2,2 pot, og da... Ja, når han ikke treffer, så treffer han ikke. Da er det ikke noe mer å gjøre med det. Hvor vanskelig er det å motivere seg til å ta fatt på et main event og starte fra scratch igjen når man akkurat har sittet på et finalebord? Nei, det tror jeg er ganske uproblematisk. Det er jeg vant til å... Jeg er ikke så vant til å sitte på finalebord og gå rett inn i main event, men å spille flere turneringer på rad, det... Nei da, nå er jeg... Det er nesten bedre å ryke på en sånn hånd som dette, for da er du liksom ferdig med det, og gånd, og så kjører vi bare på i morgen. Hvem holder du som favoritt inn, da? Jeg er litt usikker. Det er et ganske jevnt bord. Jeg synes det er mye bra spillere, så jeg tror det er ganske åpent. Gratulerer med veldig god innsats. Takk. And we just heard from fourth place finisher, fifth place finisher Morten Klein, and we're immediately back in the action with Wangberg, min racing from the hijack, the chip leader here, raising it up to 160, and Haverstad three betting at the 525. Let's see if Wangberg wants to get involved, not this time around, so Haverstad's aggression with a very pretty hand gets the job done up to 2.7 million in chips. Norwegians still having fun despite the seriousness of this with four players remaining. I am trying to be a little bit quiet at times so we can hear what they are saying. However, as this is English commentating, I don't expect many of you to understand what the players are talking about at the tables. But meanwhile, the action folds around to the chip leader. And Terry Wangberg reaching for some chips. It looks like a call from the open raise by Haverstad from the cutoff. And Haverstad flopping top pair, but Wangberg has a nice uh, straight draw going on. Either player though should be too thrilled with their hands, being that there are three clubs on that flop, nobody having any clubs in their hand. So although Haverstad is technically ahead, he would be more just probing in position, hoping that this gets the job done. I don't think he wants a call here at all. But Langberg, not deterred by the three clubs at all, wants to at least see a turn. <coughs> and now Haverstad improving to a full house after the queen paired the board now he's hoping that Wangberg had some clubs and it's Wangberg trying to rip that he improved to a full house with a bet it doesn't look like a big bet now is Haverstad going to raise or call 
facing a bet of 225,000 into a pot of around 790. And does just call, hoping to set a trap. The Jack of Hearts comes on the river. Wangberg immediately reaching for chips. And this time the bet looks like it's going to be a bit bigger. And now at this point, Haberstadt should really have little points to raise. I mean, I guess he could be getting some thin value for some flushes. But his full house may not be the best one on the board. Queen Jack, Queen A beats him. I would expect to see a call. It is a raise, though. No, it is a call. I'm sorry. And Wangberg mucking his cards, knowing that he could never possibly be good with 10 high on this board. So Haverstadt doesn't even have to show how strong he was with that full house. And does take the chip lead after picking off Wangberg's bluff. And one of the Norwegian commentators just sent me a very nice message letting me know that this isn't Wangberg's first attempt to be in the winner's circle as he did win an LOE event on Norwegian soil in 2021. He would like to add another trophy to his collection, but that last hand did not help him at all in his path had the chip lead on the final table the entire way until now. And now it's Johansson in the captain's chair with 4.2 million in chips. And Martinussen as the clear short stack showing up with a pretty enough hand from the button with the ace king jack six. The ace is suited to does bet 200,000 Wangberg. Also with a pretty hand of ace-king 7-5 with his ace also suited in diamonds. And Haverstadt who just won a decent pot to get near the chip lead and push Wangberg down from first to third. Gets out of the way. And two spades on the 7-3-9 flop. Martin Usen to act. Not the best board for either player actually. However, that changed a little bit here with the King of Hearts turn. Now Wangberg with two pair. Martinusen also connected with that King, but the rest of his cards thus far have not. But may opt to try to bet here as the short stack. He does need some chips and there's 560,000 in the middle at the moment. He is betting the pot, folks. So half his stack is going in here. A bet of 560,000 with 510 behind. I don't expect Wangberg to be going anywhere. He is behind the King-9. He is behind all the sets, but it is a draw-heavy board. And Wangberg jamming his two pair. Martinussen making the call at risk. Let's see if Ted Martinussen can get there. He needs a jack to win an ace for the chop. There are a few other hands cards as well. He does have the flush draw. I thought one of those cards was a club, but the jack or six is spades. So there are 10 outs for Martinussen. And the ace of hearts Gives both players half the pot. Everybody loves a chop pot. Maybe not Wangberg, who was ahead there, but Martinussen more than happy to sit back down and try again. He did chip up a little bit. And will get to try again with a stack of 1.4 million in chips. And he knows that if he doubles up, he's right back in the middle of things. But being how far behind he was when the chips went in there on the turn, he should be more than happy that an ace came on the river to get half of that pop back.
so it hasn't been a good couple of hands for Terry Weinberg. He lost the chip lead and then was far ahead in that last pot to try to send Johansson to the rail, but Johansson able to squeak out a chop pot. And now Weinberg on the button, back at it again with the double seated medium sized rundown with the 10 9 8 6. We can see three of Haverstadt's cards. Let's assume that the fourth one wasn't so good because he does toss it away. And Johansson also getting rid of his hand as well. And we're getting at least the blinds and the ante there, getting closer to 4 million once again. He was as high as 5.6 million at one point. But it hasn't been the best few hands for Terry Wangberg, but still in very good shape at this point with four players remaining. around to Johansson in the small blind with 9973. This may be a situation for a walk. You may see something else happen too though. Johansson is sitting on a lot of chips against the short stack, ups to limp it. And Martinusson not waking up with that much here with the 8652. If he's raising it would be on weakness, but we'll just see a flop as a two to one dog. All of his cards currently live. However, if three of them come, that 865, it would give Johansson a straight. But it's a 754 flop with two spades. Martinson with the nuts currently on the board with that 86 for a straight. Johansson with no spades. He does have that nine of spades, but doesn't have another one to go along with it. Would need a pair of runners if he opts to continue with this top pair. I don't think we're going to see Martinusen slow play here because it's still a dangerous sport despite having the nuts right now. That's out for 100,000. That may be enough to string Johansson along but not enough maybe to push him out of the pot. But perhaps Martinson wants to gain as much value as possible problem for him is what happens if a spade comes on the turn. At least that's what would be going through my head in the big blind. But that was enough. Johansson folding his over pair slash top pair, realizing he doesn't really have any draws. Martinusen getting the job done, flopping the straight in a limp pot. Haverstadt with the Rockets here, under the gun and in the cutoff. It is a rainbow hand, but of course you are going to be opening here. It is a raise to 200,000. And Johansson, also with a decent stack of chips with a pretty double-suited King-Queen-10-9. It'd be a little bit prettier if we can switch that queen to a heart and either the 10 or 9 to a diamond, but... You play with what you get, and it's a pretty hand nonetheless. I would expect to see him getting a foul from the button with either a call or even a three bet. A three bet could spoil trouble for him, though, as there is one player with a short stack. 
and Thomas Haverstadt would be more than happy to get involved with the Zaces. It is a three bet in position for Johansson and Martinusson may get a gift here depending on what happens. He is the short stack. Haverstadt is likely to four bet his aces. He is thinking things over. But he could get most of his stack in, or at least more than half, if he so chooses, with a large four bet. It is a pot size four bet to 1.77 million for nearly half his stack. We could see the equities are actually fairly close. But can Johansson actually continue? He has such a pretty hand, but if he calls, it's for so much of a stack. And is he willing to put his entire stack in the middle here? Johansson deep in thought, perhaps wishing he just called the open from the button and playing this hand in position. Perhaps looking for some information like this, or perhaps willing to get it in. We shall soon find out. Johansson is making the call folks so this is a massive pot already and Johansson will be playing this hand in position with nearly four million in chips in the pot Everstead would have liked to see a fold there, I'm pretty sure, or a five bet. And neither player getting much help, although Johansson does have that flush draw. Haberstad has about half a pot size bet, both players having about the same stack. And Haverstad making the move, jamming his stack with his aces, did connect with that 3-2 for potential other draws. And Johansson now put in a spot. He does have that flesh draw, but he has nothing else, and he would be calling off for his tournament life. This pot got bloated when Maris Johansson three bet prefop. Haverstadt quickly four bet it back. Johansson went in the tank for a bit of time before he just called. We can see the equities are still pretty close between the two players, but does Johansson want to put all his stack in at this point in time with Ted Martinusson, who's not in the hand having a short stack. <coughs> and assuming this doesn't end in a very unlikely chop pot, which I don't see how that can happen, we will have a new chip leader at this point in time regardless of who wins this hand. And if Johansson calls and doesn't win this hand, he would still have crumbs in his stack. While Haverstad, if he gets called and isn't able to hold, will be out the door in fourth place for 13,615 euro. And you could see the pain of Johansson and he shows his suited 10-9. Haverstad must be thrilled after seeing Johansson fold that. Even though being ahead, he doesn't have to sweat a turn in the river and has the biggest stack thus far at the final table with 5.7 million after the hand. Haverstad with the Rockets. 
Loving life, big smiles. While well, Ted Martinusson, who wasn't in the hand, would have liked to see these two players go at it, so he could have at least laddered up to the podium. With it a likely scenario that he would do so. If Haverstadt lost the hand, he would be on the rail. While if Johansson lost the hand, assuming he got his chips in, would have been down just to two or three big lines. But none of that happened after a fold. We do have a new chip leader though. Now Johansson, unless he's on tilt after the last hand, should be tossing that hand away with the trip nines in the hand. You can only play two cards in PLO that are in your hand. And Martinussen does have a pretty hand, does have a short stack, is in position on the button. I don't expect to see him tossing this away. It would be a little bit prettier if that ace or king were suited instead of the 7-6. But it is pretty nonetheless. And raises to 175. Gets Wangberg to toss away his hand. And let's see what he is up against. It sounds like it might be something big, actually. We haven't seen the graphics update yet. But it is just a call from the big bind. So right now we're playing this hand in the dark. Does look like a continuation bet. We don't see what the board is. Wangberg did full pre flop. And here we go. We can see now that Haverstadt actually improved to trips here. This could be it for Martinussen. Maybe he slows down here. He does not only have top pair, but he also has an open-ended straight draw. Does not have the hearts in his hand, but has that nut flush blocker. That doesn't mean too much in four card PLO, as much in, let's say, five card PLO. Martinus Here with a big decision with 720,000 in the pot. He has about 1.5 SPR, meaning he has a little more than 50% of the pot in his stack with 1.1 million in chips and 720,000 in the pot. Is betting 325,000 and I wouldn't be surprised if Haverstadt came over the top unless he's worried about those aces. Otherwise, it is a big drop board. Might as well put your opponent in. Haverstadt did just take the chip lead with some aggression. Doesn't look that thrilled with the situation, but that has the second nuts on the board currently on a draw heavy board. Well, it's really the third nuts because the three fours are real, but does jam. Let's see if Martinusson can call. Martinusson calls, folks, at risk as a four to one underdog with just one card to come. Will Haverstadt extend his chip lead? and eliminate Martinussen. Will Martinussen be able to stay alive? We shall see in a second. Only a nine or a four will save Martinussen. He was hoping his ace was live as well, but it is not in this case, facing a set of eights. And the nine of hearts completing the board on the river to give him the check mark, to double up with the nine high straight, to beat Haverstadt's trips. 
neither player having the hearts for that flush. Martinusson nearly hit the rail in, third, in fourth place for 13,615. Instead, now got that breathing room he was looking for. Still will be the shortest stack, I believe. But all four players are now closely bunched together with 50,346 euros on the line to today's winner. A little luck never hurts in poker. Everstad can't be too thrilled about that turn of events. <laughs> it looks like the tournament director Kevin, who I got to know recently at another event, is instructing the players about something. And meanwhile, uh, it appears Terry Weinberg uh, needs to leave the table for a phone call on the final table. But perhaps there is a short break here because uh, we do see some chairs being moved around. So we will be right back, folks. It looks like uh, some rearrangements are being made. Det er faktisk litt ødeleggende. Så jeg bifaller det kastet. S-kongen i 7. Det er litt decision for Kevin. Kevin Kjærstad står på S-kongen. S-kongen i 7. Det er en decision for Kevin. Skjut på S i tillegg. Her må han synne. Det skytet allerede hadde rukket å snurre rundt i gaming-stolen sin tre ganger før han blikksynte. Det er klart at tannpilkeren spiser seg ikke selv, så det er litt verdt å gjøre. Kan du tenke seg at Klein med sine 1,4 millioner tenker at de gjør ikke noe om stadig fortsatt der med, for da kan jeg sette press på, da kan jeg sette ICM press på innlærende bak. Nei, vent da, det var Pauli Hanen Mykkelbus, det som også er short. Jo, jo, men det er jo sånne ting noen spillere noen ganger tenker over også, det er at å beholde short stacken gjør ikke noe så lenge jeg kan sette mer press på de andre, men der kommer synet fra Klein, og han isolerer til og med fra Big Blind for å være sikker på at han bare får med seg Stai. Nei da, han setter Stai all in. Stai er foran. Han er fortsatt foran, to par nå. Fin flopp for Stai det her. Ja, veldig fin. Er det syver der for Klein da? Opter på turn, det er hjerter. Da er det noen flere kort da, men da vent femmeren. Den skal være trygg og fin da, han får dobling. Spiller på 615.000. Ja, men Syveren ga Klein to outs ekstra, men å være fornøyd med en sånn flopp i den situasjonen der. Og det ordner seg for hvis den står i. Stai 
Vi plukker spillbare hender her også, da. Gjør det. 9, 8, 7. Jens ut. Bygglebust. 9, 8, 6, 5. Det er en veldig fristende hånd, men det er den luka mellom 8 og 6 som gjør at den hånden er på langt nær like god som Stai sin. Hadde han hatt den luka i bunn, så er det en hånd som potensielt kan spilles. Og nå velger han å gå med den. Han hadde jo ikke mye bak her, Mikkel Bust. Han er veldig uheldig og løper rett inn i hånden som har han kraftig dominert. Han blokker til og med på det hullet i hånda til Mikkelbust. Ja. <laughs> Av alle hender. Ja, han håpet jo at Stai skulle ha kort der oppe. Ja. Men ikke denne gang, så... Ja, men her ser vi da equityen da. Står at han har 31 prosent fortsatt. Det har han ikke nå lenger. Hvem redder sekser? Men det er en firer, og vi mister Paul Johan Mykkelbust. Ja, men igjen et dypt run da, så nær et finalebord igjen. Mykkel har hatt et veldig godt mesterskap, men er det rett videre til main event da? Premiestigen, men han har ikke tenkt å sitte og la seg spise opp, selv om han hadde to stekker som var mindre, etter at han da tre ganger stjal blinder og ante. Han skal spille, prøve å få brukt ferdighetene sine der han kan bruke dem, og så var han egentlig forberedt på å kaste ut til kontra som han fikk. Jeg tror at Øystein Stai er stekken til Vangberg. Det ville vært veldig ubehagelig for de andre spillerne. Her potter Hansen med konge, konge, 8-6 etter at Haverstad har åpnet dame, dame, 9-7. Johansen har S, konge, dame, knekk. Det er ikke noe sut på S der. Man har bare 445 000. Det er jo alltid skummelt når det er... Nei, det var syn fra Hansen. Jeg synes han sa pott, ja, men ok. Da... Må Johansen ta en avgjørelse for turneringsvivet. Og med den hånda han har. Og etter gangen før her, så hadde jeg ikke klart å være. Det ligger jo 360 000 ekstra i midten nå. Det er litt det. Han har også sett at Haverstad har vært veldig aktiv da. Så det er ikke sikkert han trenger å være sånn alt for redd her. Han kan jo bruke Ulvatten Hansen mot Haverstad her ved å skvise litt hvis han går over. Men der finnes det jo... Ja, ikke sant, det er nettopp det, for det finnes jo ingen fold equity for Johansen her. Det er begge de to andre skal syn her. Her er det helt udiskutabelt, egentlig. Men Haverstad må beskymre seg litt for Hansen bak, samtidig som Hansen, hvis han virkelig hadde hatt noe krutt, kanskje han hadde lagt inn det trevet, men Johansen, der får han det på. Helt korrekt spilt. Sivas Klein har et S på hånda, det er sut, men han er alt for disciplinert til å la seg friste av disse sutede S'ene. Nå er det sånn i action før, det blir kastet tilbake til Haverstad. Jeg er spent på hva han gjør. For det er litt slitent det han sitter med, han hadde synt Johansen. Det er det ingen som helst tvil om. Men han ser jo det nå, at ved å putte inn mer penger der sånn, så må han, og da kommer ikke den skjer samtidig til asylen, så det kan koste 710 000 til dette her, og som sagt, Johansen, han kan ende opp med å bruke squeezen da, til å få en pot heads up for mye mer penger enn det som opprinnelig var tanken. Haverstad, han bare potter, og det betyr at han setter Hansen all in. 
Det var nok måten å gjøre det på. Det regnet med at Hansen, hvis han hadde hatt noe virkelig krutt, så hadde han trebettet for ikke å slippe inn på mange andre. Så aces kan han egentlig utelukke hos Hansen. Men så må Hansen tenke litt på det også. Hansen derimot, han har ikke like lett for å utelukke aces. Så for Holdem-spillere så ser det helt utenkelig ut å skulle kaste kongepar preflopp. I PLO derimot så er situasjonen en litt annen. Vi får et godt eksempel på det her. Det eneste er at Hansen jo var favoritt før her. Og da vil noen tenke, ja, men skal han ikke spille kongeparet sitt da? Svaret på det er nja. Fordi han kan ikke helt være sikker på det. Det er ACM-sprang på premiestigen. Men nå skal vi konsentrere oss om denne, for det er... Arius Johansen som er i fare for å bli slått ut her nå. Som vi ser, se på Ekvotin her. Det er 50-50. Sier grafikken. Knekt i døra, nier ved siden av. Så Johansen nå med en rap til street her. Han har ikke noe tier. Nei, det har han ikke. Nei, det er ikke noe tier der, nei. Det er vel jeg så ikke den, ja. Så ikke noe rap. Der, nå er det en tier. Nå derimot. Ja. Og Haverstad drar dødt. Johansen kan ikke slås ut. Der så han det selv også. Nikket anerkjennende. Og spiller da på 1 million 270 tusen. Og Haverstad ned på 3... Nei, det stemmer ikke. Nei, glem det. Sidepott på 1,2 millioner. 1,5, nesten 1,6 har Haverstad. Nå skvatt jeg litt i randen der. Ja, men nei. Den er litt misvisende, den å spille sidepott mot seg selv der. Ja, den minner man, den sidepotten. Pleier det, ja. Jeg tror det er ganske riktig å kaste det. Ja, 1,3 millioner. Hansen tipper igjen. ST 7-6 for Johansen. Han kan jo ligge litt merker til tendenser også. Nå, etter at de kom tilbake fra pause og blinde av topp, så har det vært veldig passivt. Og da har vi jo sett... Ja, Martinussen har jo spilt opp fra tidlig posisjon to ganger og fått rundkast. Vi så at Stahi har gjort det en gang. Og nå ser vi at det kastes mye. Jeg ville tenkt hvis jeg hadde en sterk... Ja, sånn... Altså, 15... Ja, kanskje mindre også. 12 eller 11. Kanskje prøve et oppspill, og så må man heller kaste hvis man får kontra. Men det virker som det er litt sånn... Vente til noen klincher leker nå, at vi får ut en spiller til. Ja, men Ted Martiniusen da, som prøver seg her, han hadde jo stor helm i nettet da, plukket ned to potter uten motstand, og det var nok til å få litt avstand fra han og ned til Haverstad og Johansen, som bare sitter på 12 bigs. Ja, men nå hadde han noe høyst legitim hånd også, som han var forberedt på å syne Stai med når Stai går over med S9, 5 med 2, Vangberg kaster i store blind. Og da er det Stai som er i fare for å rykke ut, men det har han vært mange ganger før. Skal han overleve også denne? Dette er Martinussen. Han vil fortsatt ta tilbake nesten 13 ganger i store blind. Skulle han tape. Men jeg ser at han er favoritt, selv om Stai da har S her. Da tar vi døra. To dabler døra avknekt. Floppe fullt hus. Det er jo greit. Da er det lang vei å gå for Stai. Ja, han har ingen vei å gå, faktisk. Nei, han har ikke noe vinner i det hele tatt. Lang vei å gå til kasjeren, tenkte jeg på. Ja, han får jo heldigvis med seg litt trøstepremier da. 6363 euro. Jeg synes det er veldig... Han får veldig fortjent applaus også Øystein Stai. Det hadde vært veldig interessant å se Øystein Stai spille PLO med en spillbar stack for ferdighetene. Det kan de ikke betvile, og bare alle de... Hvis noen oppdager det, så kan de åpne og kanskje få rundkast, og så har han bare hatt dårlig timing på det to ganger på rad. 10, 10, 6, 5, UTG. Ellers så kan det bare være det at nå... Nå er det go big og go home. Ja, nå er det fjerde hånd på rad her, og vi går et knep ned for hver gang. Dammepar, knektepar, tiepar. Det er tydelig at han bare... Altså, det kan være at han har fanget opp det at bordet er veldig passivt, og bare bestemt seg for at nå skal vi kjøre, men så bare fungerer det ikke for det, det hele tatt. Kan fortsatt fungere nå, men Hansen, han er nyrik og har konge da med knekt. 
Jaha. Og det er en sut. Johansen har SS99. Det er ikke noe sut der. Det er Padugi, alle regnbuens farger. Men det er S-bar. Og det er race, riktig nok tidlig race. Men det gir jo egentlig enda større insentiv for Johansen med tanke på at han blokker Aces. Og hvis han er oppe mot for eksempel en S-konge variant, så er det noe den dominert. Så er det alltid dette her med noe gata opp. Nå så vi at det ble rastkast der fra Klein tilbake til Hansen. Litt tricky spot her nå, han har 635 tusen bak her. Det er drøyt 11 ganger Soreblind. Og han syner. Da skal vi nok spille for turneringslivet til Hansen. Det vil overraske meg veldig hvis ikke det skjer. Som også er en ufattelig viktig pot for Johansens del. Nå vet vi jo, det er litt uheldig der for Hansen. Vi vet at Martin Klein kaster to tiren. Og det er... Blokker jo da Hansen sine stritmuligheter betraktelig. Her kommer floppen. Det er en nier der for Johansen som... Han flopper jo fullt hus for hele verden her. Ja, det er det jeg sier. Han har ikke fått ball til gang Hansen. Og du kommer inn... Altså, han har 1 prosent, har han. Så du er telling me there's a chance. Ja, det er en sjeldent lei situasjon å være i for Hansen, selvfølgelig. Jeg vet hva det er mulig. Jeg begynner å bli sliten. Hva er den ene prosenten da? Welcome back, everyone. This is Jason Glatzer coming to you live at Card Casino Bratislava for the Norwegian Champions. Today, we are going to witness a winner in the PLO 6 Max. It was an 800 euro buy-in event with 259 runners, and you can see the final four of each locked up 13,615 euro with 50,346 going to the eventual winner. And for the second time today, we are going to play the 50,000, 100,000 blind level. It was played earlier when there were seven players remaining for at least part of the time. When we were down to an official final table of six, the blinds were rolled back to 25,000, 50,000. But now we're back to where we were before. And straight off, Wangberg, who had the lead earlier and was cruising along, is opening the button with speculative holdings playing position. Seven deuce is not a good hand in hold'em, but maybe a paired, double paired seven deuce could be different just to defend. And indeed, Johansson does call, and equity-wise he is ahead, but playing this hand out of position against Wangberg, who is not afraid to be betting even when he doesn't have it. So let's see where we're at. And this isn't the flop that helps either player. Wangberg did connect with his jack. Neither player with that spade draw either. Both players do check. Wangberg feeling maybe has some showdown value. It is a scary draw board as well. Johansson checking again. Nothing happening here, and the queen of clubs on the river. If Johansson bet, he would have gotten the pot, but Store. it's hard on his chip stack. Wangberg checking back. Johansson not too happy that it was only the jack that got there. And Wangberg picking up the first pot after the break. We 
we've had some fireworks at the final table earlier. We did witness two players on the official final table hit the rail. And one more earlier at the unofficial final table to leave just four players remaining. Langberg this time for the cutoff, which is also under the gun. This time does not play his rags. Let's see if Haverstadt opens the button. Not this time. Johansson though with the queen 987 with the hearts as well. What color was shown? Does raise to 300,000, a pot size raise. And Martin Usson with a pretty ace king 10, the two less pretty but still nonetheless does call. Already 700,000 in the pot. Ten four three on the flop. Martinusen does connect with the ten. Does have a gut shot to the wheel. Johansson checks. All he really has at the moment is a back back doors to the flush and to the straight. But probably won't be able to see a turn to recognize those back doors, depending on the sizing here. Martinusen bets in position a little less than half the pot for three hundred thousand. Does take down the pot as expected. And it's up to 3.2 million in chips. <clears throat> For those of you just tuning in, this is Jason Glatzer, poker reporter, poker commentator, poker player, anything and everything poker. Poker is my life bringing to you the action at the PLO Six Max Championship at the Norwegian Championship at Card Casino Bratislava. Having a blast all week long with still nearly a week of action to come. Haverstad will certainly be opening this Ace A6-5. One of his aces is suited up to the diamonds. Opens to 250. So far, it folds around to Wangberg, who likely will also fold. Good. Johansson only has 15 big blinds, so let's see if he decides to get involved here with this queen jack jack four. The queen of clubs is suited up with that four of clubs. It does look like he will be opening up for 250,000. Meanwhile, Martinusen with a double suited queen 10 nine deuce on the button. Besides, not this time. Wangberg folds his ace 10 7 4. And I don't think Haberstadt will defend here. It's not a very pretty hand, despite it being double suited with a 10 6 3 deuce. But it is thinking things over. It would just be to call for another 150 into a 500,000 pot. And it does call. Haverstad flopping two pair. Does check. Johansson checks behind. 
the five of diamonds on the turn. So we'll have her stat now react to this. He does have two pair. Johansson shouldn't have very many three fours. He would have better two pairs or sets that potentially he would be checking back. But I don't think Haverstad should be afraid of that at the moment. And Haverstad agrees with that. And bets for 325,000. You know, Hansen quickly folds and is now down to 12 big blinds while Haverstad extends his chip lead up to 4.7 million in chips. were having a lot of fun with a lot of chatting when there were seven and six and even five players left. But now with the pay jumps, the table has gone a little bit quieter in between hands than what we saw earlier. There is still a large rail, but a lot of that went away after the very popular Dag Hansen was eliminated earlier at the final table. Haverstad had the chip has the chip lead, but he's going to show his trip eights. And Johansson uh, would have likely uh, have gotten it in, or at least seen uh, uh, called a raise there with the king ten seven six. But we shall never know. dealer coming in. All the dealers at the feature table have been doing a fantastic job throughout the week, including here at the PLO Six Max Championship. And here you can see what I was talking about earlier with the steep payout jumps. So it's a little less steep between fourth and third, but after that it's an 11,000 euro pay jump to second and a 23,000 euro pay jump to the winner. There's a big difference between going out of fourth for 13, 6, 15, and first for 50, 3, 4, to 6. And you can hear the rail having fun in the background. Norway's also involved in a football match as well, which some of the rail are watching. But meanwhile, Wangberg here with the ace, king, jack, five, opening up from under the gun for 250,000. Haverstad, currently with the chip lead, has a very gorgeous King Jack Jack 10 double suited hand. Does just call. And we'll see a flop in position. Wangberg connecting with his ace on the ace four six flop. Haverstad with the nut flush draw. Langberg checks. Let's see if Haverstad does some pot control. Does check back his flush draw and some other back doors. And instead of that, he improves to a set of jacks. Having Wangberg drawing super thing. And now it's Wangberg reaching for chips. This could cost him some money. It's a bet of 300,000, so a little less than half the pot. Haverstad also has a Broadway gut shot on top of his flush draw, on top of Erdy having a made hand with the second nuts on the board. With his set of jacks, does make the call. And the nine of diamonds on the river. Haverstadt goes from strength to strength. His set of jacks turns into the nuts with that nut flush. Weinberg's two pair would have been dangerous in a way it's a kind of a bad beat for Haverstad with Wangberg turning two pair it likely will slow Wangberg down and indeed it does let's see if Haverstad can get any value from the nuts 
it's going to be hard. He may want to bet a little bit big, actually. Not necessarily to get a call in this in with what Weinberg has, but with what Weinberg could have, which is a weaker flush. And he does bet big, 750,000. Weinberg makes the call with the top two. And it's a massive pop for Haverstad. And it's over six million in chips, while Weinberg, who once had 5.5 .5 million in chips, even maybe 5.6, is down to 2.5 million. Weinberg was behind on the turn as well to Haverstad's turn trips and does say nice hand to his opponent like a gentleman. Being social in poker is part of the game and could help you relax a little bit and brush off those hands where maybe you could have saved some chips. Certainly he would have if he folded the river. You can't blame him for betting the turn with top two though. And it's the chip leader Haverstad first to act once again. With some nice cards, Queen Jack 9-9. Nine, nine. And does raise. And Johansson with one too many queens there. Does need to get something going at some point. But not right here. And Martinussen gets rid of his hand from the small bind. And Weinberg looks ready to defend his 9 6, six four. Does have a baby clubs as well with the 6 4. And the King 8 8 flop doesn't hit either player. Haverstad's still ahead. May want to bet just because he has the position here, but I wouldn't blame if he checks his back. If he bets, it's probably not going to be uh, called by Weinberg, or at least it shouldn't be. Bet small, didn't matter the size. Weinberg with the snap fold. Weinberg's kind of in an awkward spot with a 1.2 million stack and him having 2.2 million. And as we earlier mentioned, although the pay jumps are getting sick, it's a matter of those pay jumps between third and second and second and first, but still the pay jump between fourth and third is nearly 3,000 euros. And he would love to see Johansson hit the rail before him. And Johansson now first to act with 12 big blinds with a jack 10, 8, 5. It's taking a bit of time to think. It does toss it away. Martin Usan with a double suited hand, but the 4 4 3 bit of it isn't that great, but is on the button, so we'll be opening the button for 250,000. Langberg with a quick fold this time around, and the chip leader, Thomas Haverstad with sort of a run down here with 7652 his hearts are live we'll be defending and taking things from there the king 8 4 flop well now Martinusen did at least connect here well with bottom set meanwhile Haverstad with the 567 has a straight draw it does go check check though and the ten of hearts on the turn gives Haverstad not only a straight draw but a flush draw 
and a 5, and a 6, and a 7, and a heart. And he gets the check mark against Martinusen straight. And it's not a uh, set, not any heart, because if it's the 8 of hearts or king of hearts, it does fill up Martinusen. But it's Haverstadt to lead out for 400,000. And I could see Martinusen going either way here. He does call to bring the pot up to 1.45 million. And the ace of diamonds completing the board on the river. Nobody having that queen jack for Broadway. No possible flush draws. Martinusen holds with his bottom set. But meanwhile, it is the chip leader Haverstad thinking about what to do here. Thinking about whether he could wrestle away this pot, but he does give up, he does check. Martinusen would be able to get value from some combination of hands that he's ahead of with a bet but doesn't want to also feel like he's betting into a traffic. Is thinking through his options. I like that the players are not acting impulsively. You have as much time as you need. Of course, if you go too far, you may have the clock called on you, but it's not like online poker where you do need to act quickly. It looks like a bet of 800,000. Haverstadt will likely snap fold. It's for 750,000. It could have been for 200,000 or 100,000 and likely would have led to a fold as well. Perhaps if it was very small, we would have seen a check raise, but I don't think so. After this final table, they plan to play out on live stream at least the semifinals, if not the finals, of the 800 euro heads up affair. Believe it or not, Espen Uwen Jorstad, who won the 2022 World Series of Poker main event for $10 million, $10 million will be among the players in the final four. Very excited about commentating that as well. We may miss the beginning of that though, depending on what time this final table ends. We've also gone to commentate on some high stakes cash game action throughout the week. We are taking a night off from that with the big tournament action. But meanwhile, back to the action. Wangberg opening to 230,000 with Ace King 9 3. The short stack Johansson thinking about what to do from the big blind with his queen 8 8 5 it is double suited but he is short I'd be surprised to see a raise anything else when shock me but I think a call is the best play it's a bit different than Hold'em due to the pot limitness of uh, Omaha that at these stack depths you don't have to think you're like in push shove mode you, you can easily just call and get away from the hand if you want to does call and Wangberg flopping top two on the ace deuce tray rainbow flop and Johansson checks and if Wangberg bets he should quickly take this down. I guess it's in theory possible that John Johansson tries to bluff, but it would be very ill-timed if he did. Wangberg betting 300,000. Johansson folding, and Wangberg uh, gets some space between him and Johansson. Johansson down to nine big binds. Wangberg up to 25 big binds. 
the other two players have much bigger stacks. Langberg entered the final table with the chip lead, but coughed away some chips and now needs a little bit of momentum going his way. Perhaps this is the start of it. I think Wangberg will sit out this queen four three deuce from under the gun slash cutoff. Haversad with a double paired Brunson from the button is the chip leader and will be opening. He's at least suited with the clubs as well. Opening to 225, we've seen different bet sizings from Haverstad. Martinusen defending with this king queen 9 6. Does have spades in his hand. Martinusen flopping top pair. Also a gut shot. Haverstad doesn't have much going on here. And if his 10 doesn't hit, it would give uh, Martinusen a straight. But it's not stopping him from betting in position. Let's see where Martinusen does here. We can see he's nearly a 9 to 1 favorite. However, there are so many hands he's behind. He could be even drawing to pretty much a chop if he thought Haverstad had 9 10. Meanwhile, Everstead has some blockers for that with the pair of tens in his hand. Let's see if Martinusen can make the right read here. It's very difficult against Haverstad. We can see Haverstad's betting his blockers in position. Martinusen can't. And Haverstad gets the job done. Gets back over six million in chips. Quite the poker face there, not showing that he's happy that he got one through. Haverstad, who just won the last pot, has had the chip lead now for a little bit of time, opening up with the double suited 7743, using the same sizing as last hand from the button, this time from the cutoff. And Johansson, who's been waiting for a spot, he thinks this one is it, does have the dominating pair here with the queen queen 7 4, but there's two more players to act. I'm not sure if it's going to be enough to get his whole stack in. Nope, he still has 30,000 behind. It's about the same though. Wangberg may want to get involved here with his ace king 10 5, but it's a high variant situation for him. There's also Haverstad involved in the pot who opened up. If he does get involved, then I think we can see Haverstead getting out of the way. If not, Haverstead may feel he's priced in to call and or put Johansson in for the rest of his stack. Weinberg not wanting to get involved, leaving the dirty work up to Haverstead. And Haverstead quickly folds. Johansson is able to chip up the 13 big blinds from 8.5 just like that, just with a 3 bet. Job well done. A small amount of breathing room now. Still has a lot of work to do. 
if he wants to win the championship and the 50,346 euro top prize. So Johansson, who just chipped up the 13 big blinds, won't be playing this one. Sit this one out with the trip eights in his hand. Martinusson, though, may want to play the button, not this time, and not strong enough for him to get involved. It's a different story for Weinberg, who looks like he just completed the blinds there. Did indeed call with the King-10, A4, and Haberstad <coughs> opts to see a free flop with a load of crap in his hand, but we can see his load of crap is all live. That's why the equities are so close, but it's very hard to realize that equity. He does flop a flush draw. The action is checked over to him as well. And may be able to snag this one. It looks like a bet of half the pot. Indeed it is to 150,000. Wangberth has the open-ended straight draw, part of that is actually a gut shot to the king high straight, but the jack with, is part of an open-ender with the 7-9. And the five of hearts on the turn does not complete the straight for him. And let's see if Haverstadt continues along. Does have that flush draw. He's the only player to have paired that board, but it's only with the five and did just get called with the bet, but that's not slowing him down. Depending on how big, it will likely push Weinberg out of the way, and it is a big bet of 450,000 into 600,000. Weinberg takes another look at his cards, toss them away, and Haverstadt extends his chip lead once again. Playing very well, understanding position, understanding where he's at, and up to 6.2 million in chips. And binds have already gone up. Time is just flying by. Binds are up to 60,000, 120,000 with 120,000 big blind to ante. While we were on Groundhog's Day for a little while with uh, several of the bind levels repeating with binds rolled back to 25,000, 50,000 when we reached just six players left for the official final table. They were as high as 51,000 before that. So now we have a new bind level that we have not yet seen yet. And Martin Usen wakes up under the gun with Ace King, King Deuce. A PLO eight hand dream, but also decent in PLO, especially with its ace being suited. Weinberg will likely have to get out of the way with the 8433. After he looks at his cards, it didn't take him long to do that. And Haverstad, the chip leader from the small blind, with a tasty 10 9 8 7 rundown that does flop quite well. He also has that club draw up to the 10. And will call from the small blind out of position. And Johansson, as the short stack, wants to see some fireworks, but not by him this hand. He wants to get out of the way. Not only is it 10 9 4 2 only, but it's all spades, so he's sort of blocking his own flush draw. Not that there's a draw quite yet. And a 10 out of the window along with the 6 4. This hits Haverstadt quite well, but Martinusson, if the hand was over now, would still be ahead with a pair of kings, a pair of 10s. But Haverstadt is looking pretty with that 7 8 9. Any five, any seven, any eight, any nine. He may be afraid of their diamonds, being he doesn't have any diamonds in his hand. But assuming this isn't too big, would likely be calling. 
On the other hand, this is a little bit big. It's a bet of 450,000 into 740,000. It could have been bigger, but it should be big enough. I'm not surprised though, Haverstad is calling. He is ahead equity wise. He doesn't want to see a diamond, but wants to see one of those cars we mentioned. And it's a set of Cowboys from Martinusen. Expect him to bet big though. The board is still scary for him, despite having the nuts at the moment. Is thinking about what to do with this set of Cowboys. Perhaps having that King of Diamonds makes a little bit of difference too, but I don't think so. It only makes it marginally less likely that Haverstead is not on a flush draw. But even if he's not on a flush draw, there's many straight draws he's on. And does bet the pot. A massive bet of 1.64 million. And I think Haverstead is going to get out of the way. He'll still be in the chip lead after this hand. He doesn't look too thrilled about this. It was a great bet by Martinusen, not letting his opponent to see a river card. Haverstead was on a pretty big draw. And Martinusen getting closer and closer to the chip lead of Thomas Haverstead. Double suited ace jack ten nine. Does raise to three hundred thousand. And let's see what Johansson does. He only has a million in a stack. This could be where he gets it in with the king queen eight seven. time. That was a pretty hand, but it was also an under the gun open by Wangberg, respecting Wangberg there. And even getting everybody to fold there, you pick up 300,000 in chips. said opening with ace 10 for deuce for a min race something he might not do if he didn't have the chip lead Sean Hansen is the short stack does it fold I think we could see that coming based on the previous hand where he was a bit stronger, but Langberg will get involved either with the call or raise. He does just complete from the big line with the king, queen, jack, eight. 
both players were similar equity, both players with four live cards. But now it's Wangberg improving to trips on the King King seven rainbow flop. Does check. I would expect to see Haverstead bet his position. Haverstad betting for 180000 Not a big bet. Is Weinberg going to call or raise? We know he's not folding. It looks like it's going to be a raise. No, it is just a call. Nine of diamonds on the turn. It's still a rainbow board. But I would expect if Haverstadt bets that we're going to see a raise by Wangberg to protect this hand now that the nine is there. But he does check. And that maybe will pause stuff for Wangberg. He does check for a third time post flop. Haverstadt may try to wrestle this away. But I won't be surprised if he gets up on the hand. If he does try to, he's likely to get called by Wangberg. As Wangberg does have trips in his hand. He's losing to a lot of hands, but his hand is still strong. Does check it back, and Wangberg wins the <coughs> pot with trip kings. There's no way for Wangberg to get more chips out of that pot if Wangberg bet at any point or race at any point. His opponent, Haverstadt, would have gone out of the way. This time it's Marius Johansson, short stack player, with four left, first to act from the cutoff. Johansson has played fairly tight. I don't expect this to be within his range. Does fold it around to Wangberg in the small blind, who completes against the Chip leader Haverstad, although Haverstad's chip lead is a little bit less than it was before after just losing a pot to Wangberg. But now he's back in position, may opt to raise and put some pressure on his opponent with the 10 8 7 6. And indeed, that's what he does. Wangberg snap folds and Haverstad back over 5 million. see the lovely trophy for this event in the background and here's a look at the chip counts Thomas Haverstadt still with the chip lead Ted Bartonussen not too far behind Terry Wangberg who began the final table with the chip lead in third place and here's a look at the payouts a final four have each locked up 13,615 euro they jump up fast from there until there is just one player left standing with the trophy, along with the massive 50,346-year-old top prize. Mm -hmm. 
Gutenberg opting not to open the button. Let's see what the chip leader have set opts to do from the small bind. Not the prettiest looking hand. A jack 10, five deuce, but you never know. Not this time, and the short sack. Johansson yeah. gets a walk with 8433. Uh, <clears throat> he's got to be thrilled about that. I mean, instead of losing uh, the 120,000 big blind and the 120,000 big blind anti put in, he does gain 60,000. So that's a 300,000 chip swing for the short stack. Holding under the gun, the chip leader, Haverstad. This is a bit prettier than his last hand. It should be open from the button with the ace jack 9 4. He does have two diamonds in his hand. It's unfortunate for him it's not the ace or the jack but the nine, but as of now, that would be live if we saw diamonds. And Johansson with the short sack with the ace jack 4-4. Four, four. He is facing a pot size open by Haverstad. He could decide to get it in right here, right now. But he has been a little bit tight. I won't be surprised to see a fold. He does want to get onto that podium at a minimum and then try to take it from there with four players remaining. He also should know that Haverstead could be opening much wider than he is. So let's see how he approaches this particular spot. It wasn't a quick reaction by Johansson. He's thinking things through before going ahead. And Johansson jamming in a stack of 1.1 million. And Martin Usen also with a very pretty ace king 8 6. But it is already a third of his stack in the pot and does fold it as Haverstad going to call. Indeed, he is. And we can see that the equities are nearly identical for both players. There's a 30% chance of a chop as well. The short stack, Johansson is at risk at the moment. Let's see if Maris Johansson can get back in the seat either with a chop or a double up. He'd be happier with a double up and I'm sure he'd be happy to sit back down either way. He's basically fading a nine, he's fading diamonds and some kind of potential draw with the jack nine combination. He'd be happy to see the case four though. But this is a scary flop for Johansson. It could be showers if a diamond comes on the Turner River. The eight of spades is a safe card for Johansson. But the five of diamonds on the river to send Johansson on the rail for 13,615 euro in fourth place. And we are down to just three players remaining, each locking up 16,516 euro. Second place will get 27,214 euros with tonight's winner going home with 50,346 euros. Well played Maris Johansson putting on his jacket and will about to be interviewed in Norwegian. It was a nice run to come in fourth place out of 259 runners. Nice ROI on this 800 euro buy-in event as well. You could see Frode Fagerle 
the man, the myth, the legend, standing there with him. He's about to be interviewed. Let's leave with the stark insats, but fourth place, what do you feel like right now? Top for the first. It's hard, though. It's hard to get to the next level. For sure, we're on the same side. Fourth place is really good. I can't get angry at that. I think it's hard. Jeg har egentlig spilt godt i dag, hadde litt tur i går. Jeg tror at Sigurd Eskeland har litt slått på meg etter en situasjon i går kveld. Så alt i alt er det jo veldig bra å bli nummer fire i gjennom i Peru. Det er en fantastisk prestasjon, og er det da et lite paradoks at av alle de som ryker ut her, nå snakker vi om 259 spillere. Det er altså 255 av dem som har havnet bak deg, og likevel så er alle som går ut, og man er litt skuffet når man ryker selv med en så god plassering. Ja, men når man har kommet så langt, så vil man jo gå helt til topps da. Vi sitter jo her og spiller om Hedre og Ære og Norgesmesterskap, og det å bli Norgesmester er jo stort da. Så når man ryker som en fire, så kjennes det litt surt, men samtidig så er det jo veldig mye 13 000 euro. Det er jo greit å ta med seg hjem, nordover. Hva er du mest fornøyd med med spillet ditt i løpet av disse to dagene? Det er et godt spørsmål. Det er jo egentlig å navigere i et sånt stort felt. Det er jo det å spille PLO, det er jo høy varians da, som skal klare å unngå en del situasjoner. Altså det at jeg hadde stekk tidlig, at jeg kunne på en måte ta litt risiko. Så spilte jeg meg ned ganske sent i går kveld og klarte å komme tilbake igjen i turneringen. Det er flere ting egentlig som på en måte føler jeg behersker PLO bare bedre og bedre, og det er kjekt. Gratulerer med fantastisk innsats. Takk for det. And back to the action. We just have three players remaining for the title. We can see that we missed a, at least one hand during that interview. Have a raise by Martinusen here from the button. Haverstad with the chip lead is likely going nowhere with the Queen Jack 10 3. does indeed call. There's already 730,000 in the pot. Two spades on the two king five flop. Haverstad technically ahead, but neither player connecting. Martin Usen will be betting, and that should get the job done. A bet of 300,000. Haverstad not having much. He has some back doors to the straight. That's it. And Martin Usen picking up the pot in position. in here with the king 10 a4 with three-handed under the gun and button are the same but does fold Haverstad the chip leader with the ace king 9-6 expect him to either complete or raise with Haverstad I do expect a raise with some other players perhaps a completion and does raise to 300,000 Martin Usen, though, is not going anywhere with the ace jack 10 7. The ace of spades connects with his 10 of spades as well, so it's a well connected hand, does make the call. 
will be playing also this hand in position. And the seven, six, five flop actually has Haberstadt ahead, but not by a lot. Let's see if Martinusen takes a stab at this. It is kind of a dangerous flop. He has back doors to the flush. Does have top pair. It looks like a probing bet for 225,000. We'd like to see a fold here. But Haberstadt, the chip leader, calls. A four of hearts on the turn could slow everybody down. You could, we could see that Martinusen is still ahead with his seven. But this isn't the turn card he wanted to see at all. However, if he does bet here, he should win the pot. And he is reaching for chips. And that will definitely get the job done. I mean, Haberstadt does have that flush draw. But that is a big bet. Of course, Haverstadt can raise here as well, but I don't think he's going to want to blow up his stack. He can call. He would still have a lot of chips. If the bet was bigger, we would see Haverstadt likely folding. Now, I'm not going to be surprised regardless of what he does. Everybody has different styles, and Haverstadt has shown he knows what he's doing. And does call, hoping for a club on the river. There are other cards that can help him as well, but he probably doesn't know that at this point in time. He's probably putting his opponent on a straight. And the six of spades was one of those cards, now has trips on the river. Does have that check mark. Instead, thinking things over, because even if his opponent, Martinusen, did have a straight, he has that six, he could be repping for some full house, and he's betting big, two million, and gets the job done, extends his chip lead. A man with a plan here, Haverstad. Check calls that turn for half the pot, comes back with a massive bet on the river, has nearly seven million in chips after winning that hand. Let's do a pot. Let's do a pot. Mm -hmm. Og her ute på sidebordene så er vi klare for en semifinale i dette pokerhøyene. Det er ikke så ofte vi sier akkurat de ordene, men i heads up, der er det akkurat semifinale som gjelder. Og vi har en fantastisk duell, for vi har to, to spillere som kjenner hverandre kanskje litt for godt. For det er ikke veldig lenge siden sist dere var i duell, Oskar. Nei, det er vel et par måneder siden. Uh, online da, vel å merke. Og finale, vel å merke. Ja, finale også. Og hvordan gikk det? Nei, hva skal jeg si, hjemmeseier. <laughs> det ble det, ja, da tok jeg den ned da. Men... Uh, det er jo en av dere som har titel i Live NM, og til og med to ganger, og til og med to ganger i Heads Up. Hvordan er det i det hele tatt mulig? Uh, nei, jeg har jo nok prøvd den del ganger, altså, men det er jo veldig... Jo, du vant første og tredje, da. Ja, da. <laughs> nei, jeg, jeg er veldig fornøyd med å ha to titler, selvfølgelig. Går for den tredje i år, selvfølgelig. Men, uh... Hvorfor er du så god i Heads Up? Um, jeg har spilt veldig mange hender i Heads Up. Ikke så mye de siste årene, veldig mye før, og har... God erfaring, vil jeg si. 
Jeg sier bare i hvert fall at her er vi klare til å rumble. Det er semifinale. Det er en stor duell. Vi kommer selvfølgelig til å holde dere oppdatert på hvordan det her utvikler seg etter hvert. Formatet er enkelt. De spiller med hver sin stack, men de har også denne ekstra kulen som de kan sette inn, som gjør at det blir kanskje litt mer spillerom. Jeg vet i hvert fall at jeg gleder meg til å stå her, og jeg lover at jeg skal oppdatere dere på hvordan det kommer til å gå etter hvert. So back to the action after that quick interview. Two and a half, two, six, two, seven. Averstead looking for chip counts on his opponents. Despite not needing to share, it is a friendly game among the Norwegians. All 259 entries from Norway. Been absolutely enjoying the action. This is Jason Glatzer coming to you live from Kart Casino Bratislava for the Norwegian Championship. This is the PLO Six Max Championship with more than 50,000 going to the winner. Already the final three have locked up 16,516 euro. And back to the action once again. Wangberg limping from the small blind but Haverstad is likely to bump this up. He's bumping up anyway a lot in these kind of limp pots, but certainly with a double suited ace, ace nine eight, one of the best hands in PLO. I even like this better myself than the ace, ace, king, queen. And Weinberg with a good hand himself opts to make a call as diamonds are alive if they come out for play. And Wangberg flopping two pair, top two pair on the Jack Queen deuce flop does check. Expect Haverstad to try to continue his story, but it's probably not going to work out for him this time, depending on what happens. But does check back, perhaps recognizing that's not the best flop for him. And now, in addition to Wangberg. Flopping top two, he has a flush draw on the turn. And does fire out for a pot size bet of 840,000, or at least ask how much the pot is. But it looks like it is indeed a pot size bet of 840,000. Haverstad, who had the best hand pre pop, does still have some equity in this hand, but it's hard to understand where that might be if, from his point of view may be able to find the fold here and save himself some chips. He doesn't appear too happy with the spot that he's in at the moment. If he does fold, he'll still have the majority of chips with 6.5 million in his stack. Does make the fold. Recognizing that Weinberg might be strong. And blinds have just gone up, folks, to 80,000, 160,000, along with that 160,000 big blind, Andy. So 400,000 going into the pot before anybody acts during every hand.
Lisa Weinberg making the easy fold with the 6444. However, Haberstad, never afraid to put pressure on his opponents, does have a nice hand with Ace King 3 3. He would have preferred this 3s to be a bit higher, but he'll certainly either call or raise, and in this case, he calls. And Martinusen with the ace, eight, five, three. It is double suited. Let's see if he wants to call or raise. He does call. Players very close in equity. Pilo is typically a post flop game and cash games with some pre flop strategy as well, but more post flop than hold them for sure. And the 6, 9, 10 flop, nobody with the 7, 8 for the nuts. Does go check, check. Two of spades on the turn, also nobody with spades in their hand. That doesn't really change how people feel about their hands. But maybe one of the players will take a stab at it, because there is 480,000 in the pot already. Let's see what's on the river. Is the Nine of Clubs pairing the board? Averstad, his threes are live. With Martinusen not connecting at all. Is Martinusen going to try to steal this? Because I bet will work, or at least should. And after Haverstad checking three times, Martinusen betting 225,000 into 480,000. Unless Haverstad has a read on his opponent, expect these cards to go into the muck. With Martinusen, despite not hitting anything, winning the pot, and up to nearly three million in chips. A very strong understanding, as expected. This is an 800 euro buy-in event with a lot of money on the line, so it should come as no surprise. The awareness and intelligence of all the players at the final table, especially those in the top three. In order of the one, six. Six, six, seven. You tell us, all the people who are the director, the director of the team. I see a six, so they are, 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 Haverstad still with the lead, right. holding the button, leaving the two shorter stacks to battle it out in the blinds. Martinusen with the King Jack 6-6. Six, six. I don't think he's going to give up on this hand. Is he going to raise or call is what I am waiting to see. Does just complete the blinds. And Wangberg with the 8-8-6-5. Eight, eight, he will be making a raise. He is indeed raising the pot to 480,000. And Martinusen giving up on his hand. Wangberg taking one away. And is back near 4 million in chips. And it's Martinusen to start off the action with the King Queen 7 5. He is currently the short stack, but does have some breathing room. Nobody is super short at this point. Does fold Wangberg with the Ace Queen 9 3. Once again, I don't expect him going anywhere. It's a matter of raising or calling, and he does raise to 250,000. 
and Haverstadt, the chip leader, he has shown he does like to see flops, he does like to play hands, he does like to put pressure on his opponent. Most players might be thinking about folding here, but not Haverstad, not with the chip lead. Does call. Will be also playing the hand in position. King, eight, six, flop, two hearts. Nobody with hearts in their hand. Nobody connecting with this board. Langberg checks as Haverstad gonna try to steal it. You don't necessarily play your 10, 5, 4, 3 just to see what you'll hit on the board. You're playing your position with the eight of diamonds pairing, eight of diamonds pairing the board on the turn. He's going to have to give up after checking back that flop and Wangberg up to 4.5 million. After going in the wrong direction, as he entered the final table with the chip lead, he's slowly but surely recovering and got most of his chips back. He had a table high at one point of 5.6 million and now has 4.5 million in chips. Langberg now with a monstrous hand. Even one of his aces is suited up with the ace, ace, 10, five on the button. No surprise, he's raising at all. And it's a 375,000 Haverstad. The chip leader gets out of the way from the small blind. But meanwhile, Martin Hussen with the king, king, eight, seven, double suited. This could be fireworks. I would very often be expecting a three bet. If he does call, that could save him to some degree, but let's see what he decides to do. He likely will be three betting and is three betting the pot. Expect Wangberg to put him in for the rest. Expect Ted Martinusson to be at risk with his double suited Kings. And unfortunately for him, only one of those suits is live being that Wangberg even has his diamond draw covered has his King covered with aces, but still he's only a two to one underdog. And if he's able to pull this out, he will have 5.3 million in chips. The two players exchange some fist pumps. We could be down to heads up play, or we could have a new dynamic depending on what happens on this board. A bit of the setup for Martin Usson. He's telling the rail he has kings against aces. Both players seem a bit nervous. Who can blame them? But both comforting each other. And even if Wangberg isn't able to win this pot, he will still have nearly two million in chips with a chance to come back. Det står där som goda vänner, Sverige och Aulin. Utfaller får vi klart nog med. Det är en väldigt friendly game, despite the amount of money on the line. I'm nervously anticipating this board. Är du det? Nej, vi tar det på. You can hear Martin Usen talking with his rail. And here we go. A nine out of the window followed by an eight and a deuce, two hearts. So Martin Usen now pulls ahead in the hand. Connected with the safe, but more importantly, has that heart flush draw being live. And the king of clubs on the turn to give him the top set and having Wangberg drawing super thin only to an ace. Oh my god. What a turn for Martinussen. And the 
five of clubs completing the board on the river. Neither player having club. Martin Usson, instead of hitting the rail, doubles up to 5.3 million in chips near the chip lead. Wah, wah, wee, wah, he says. Mm. Nearly hit the rail in third place for 16,516. Now it's Wangberg who began the final table as the chip leader with the short stack. A massive cooler for him with his aces. But it would have been a cooler as well for Martin Usen with his double suited double suited cowboys. Wow. What a hand there. And here's a look at the chip counts. You can see now not only did Martin Usen survive, but he is very close to Thomas Haverstad for the chip lead. Well, Terry Wangberg will need a little bit of help, but is still alive with 12 big blinds. And here's a look at the payouts, folks. So right now they have all locked up 16,516 euro with second place scheduled to receive 27,214 euros. And tonight's winner going home with a massive 50,346 euro top prize. What a hand, folks, that was. I'm still in shock. It would have been less surprising if that flesh draw completed than the fact that he turned that set of cowboys. Although Martin Usen seems semi-embarrassed about it, there's nothing to be embarrassed about playing king, king, eight, seven, double suited at all. Fortunate to still be alive, fortunate to be competing for the title, however. And that's why we love the game of poker. And I love Omaha even more than Hold'em. So I am having a blast myself. Also looking forward to the Heads Up Championship semifinals beginning soon as well. Martinusson, who just won that big pot, cracking aces with his kings. Opening up the 480 now. Weinberg. Let's see how he feels about his ace jack for deuce. If it was PLO weight, I would expect him to just get his stack in, but he's still going to see a flop here. This isn't the hand that flops super well, but he's in position. And I say that and he flops two pairs, so what do I know? Neither player with that spade flush draw. Both players with the same two pair. Martin Usen with slightly better redraws with two live cards for a redraw where Wang just has that, Wangberg just has that jack live at the moment. But this more, most often ends in a chop pot. Martinson bets, Wangberg jams in for the rest of it. Both players with the two pair as we mentioned. Now would be a huge cooler if Wangberg hits the rail. It would also be a cooler for Martin Newsom if Weinberg doubles up, so. Let's see if both players can get back in their seats. Weinberg fading any queen, any eight, and is praying for that jack. And a nine would be headache for him as well as he would have kicker problems, but it's a three of diamonds on the turn. That makes a five live for him as well to the wheel. <laughs> Let's see if Wangberg can get there. Right now, the likely scenario is a chop pot. And the five of clubs on the river to complete his wheel, runner, runner, wheel, doubles through Martinusen. The two players now neck and neck with Haverstad, now the clear chip leader. I would say almost there's some karma in poker after Wangberg having his aces cracked by Martin Usson in the previous hand and getting there. This hand, both players flopping the same two pair. Martin Usson had the better redraws before the turn. Both players had probably an equal amount of redraws before the five of clubs on the river to give Wangberg the wheel and the double up. It has been very exciting the last two hands. 
fireworks left and right. And Langberg with the double thumbs up. I think all three players are excited to be on the podium, but when you get this close, you really want that title. You can taste it, you can feel it, it's so close. They say sometimes the only player happy in tournament poker is the one that wins, which is true in the immediate term, but very often players on a final table, it'll take them maybe a little bit of time. They can reflect back and be very happy with their performance as well. It's been absolutely thrilling action here in the PLO Six Max Championship at the Norwegian Championship. <laughs> Lots of emotion. A roller coaster ride mostly for Wangs Wangberg, who has gone from chip leader to short stack back to middle of the pack. And Wangberg now from the small blind with the Jack Jack 10 4. Does raise it up to 400,000. We don't see all of Haverstadt's cards, but we see enough of them that the first three are all connected together. Chip leader does like to play pots in position and so far this hand looks like one that he should be playing in position. So even though we don't know the final card by Haverstad, we see that he does have a very tasty straight draw there with no flushes on the board, but it's Wang's, Wangberg trying to rep that he got something on this hand, didn't really grab much. I just bet big, bets 525, more than half the pot. Yeah. Haverstad asking Wangberg how much he has in his stack. We could say he has 2.7 million back. Well, we can't see all of Haverstad's cards. The three we see should be enough to continue in this hand. I think he's thinking about whether to call or whether to raise, and if he wants to raise for how much. In this case, we know a raise will get the job done because Weinberg doesn't have enough in his hand to call off. And does raise to 2.5 million, a pot size raise. Weinberg quickly folds and Haverstadt extends his chip lead. Been quite the roller coaster ride for Wangberg. Now both him and Martinussen are fairly short, especially with blinds mm -hmm. increasing mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. now. Oh. Yes, yes. Blinds are now 100,000, 200,000 with a 200,000 big blind ante. We get another look at that gorgeous trophy. That will go to the winner soon enough. Stack depths are getting shorter and shorter. And Wangberg with 13 and a half big blinds with the king 10, three deuce from the button. Is betting the pot. It's not a very strong hand, but uh, wants to grab those blinds and ante. He definitely doesn't want to see anybody playing back in him. Haverstad folding, but Martin Usen, it may be a different story with the ace 10 6 5. But it is not. And Wangberg stealing one away with the king 10 3 deuce and up to 3.2 million in chips. and is in the big line right now, getting ready for the next hand.
carefully placing his cards in the box. Haverstad still with the chip lead. Once he got it, he hasn't let go. Martinusen got close at one point before taking a huge cooler. But to get there, he gave a bad beat to Wangberg. So it's been bouncing around the chips. And Haverstad raising it up with a beautiful ace-king 10-7. The ace is even connected hearts-wise. Langberg not so strong, but may decide to play this anyway out of position, may decide to raise it. Now, it is fairly short stack poker with three players remaining. And the deuce three eight flop, rainbow, has Wangberg ahead with his fives, but it isn't really a flop either player wants to see. Obviously, Wangberg would be thrilled to see a four, especially a four of spades. But Wangberg doesn't care, is betting huge, and Haverstadt's going to have to fold, despite having a monster preflop. That was not the flop he needed to see, and Wangberg now up to three point eight million in chips, showing a lot of heart. Not afraid to mix it up at all. And players still having fun. Despite the fact that there's 50,000 on the line for the winner, and yet they've only locked up 16,000, I say only, in quotations, because that is quite a big payout, regardless of where these three players finish up, but you can see how much more they're playing for. Martinusen getting out of the way. Weinberg will likely look down his cards and want to play them. 8-7-6-6, the 8-6 are of spades, and Haverstad probably wishing he was playing PL8 for a hand, but happy enough to call with the ace, queen, four, deuce. It was a limp pot. And does connect with his queen, but depending on the bet here by Wangberg, is it enough for him to come along? It is a bet of 400,000 into 600,000. Doesn't have any clubs in his hand. Is ahead. But Wangberg, using his aggression to his advantage, and now up to 4.2 million in chips. He's basically doubled his stack in the last few hands without seeing a showdown. Now we have yeah. amazing technology here thanks to shared hands, but I don't think one of those things would be an English translation of the Norwegian, but we can see that everybody's interacting with each other. It's one large poker family among the Norwegians in general. But don't expect any mercy from Weikberg here. He's going to be opening up his ace-queen 9-8. This time the 500,000. Haverstad, who still has a chip lead, but it's dwindling a little bit, will be folding from the small blind. Martinussen, who is the tightest of the three players from what we've seen, will be folding as well. And Wangberg winning another pot. And it's half a million chips just by taking the blinds. I hope you've been enjoying this as much as me. Even if you haven't played PLO, you're probably getting some education now. 
with the final three putting on quite the display in this PLO Six Max Championship here at Card Casino Bratislava. And Hammerstad, who now just has a slim chip lead over Wangberg, is opening the button with Ace-10, 6-4, with three diamonds in his hand. Only two of them obviously matter. Does just limp the button actually, so this is a new strategy by Haverstad. We'll be playing in the hand in position depending on what Wangberg decides to do with his uh, not so strong hand. The Queen Jack bit is nice though, does have potential heart flush draw. So we're going to see a family pot three way. I believe this is the first time in three hand to play we've seen this. And Wangberg, I was criticizing his hand to some degree, does flop top two pair here. Martinusen checks now. Expect Wangberg to continue. Not continue because this was a limp pot, but it is a big bet. I don't expect either of his opponents to do anything here. And Wangberg coming back near the chip lead. If Wangberg can win this event, it'll be a story for the ages. He began the final table with the chip lead. Haverstad took it over not too long into the official final table. And it's had the chip lead ever since. And then Wangberg lost a big pot to Martinusen when his aces didn't hold against Kings. But since then has come back with a fury. Langberg with the double suited king 9-8-3 from the small blind. Will this be the hand he regains the chip lead? Right now he's just limping. And Haverstad won't be limping his aces, I don't believe. I mean, the 4-3 isn't so nice, but it's still aces. Nothing is suited up for him, but that shouldn't matter either. It should be well ahead of an opponent's limp range and well ahead of even a raising range. So it does jack it up to 600,000. Wangberg making the call, so there's already 1.4 million in the pot. The player that wins this hand will be in the chip lead. And Wangberg flopping top pair, does check. Haverstead still technically in the lead with his aces, but you can see the equities are very close. There's a lot of cards that will put Wangberg up in front. Some backdoors as well. But if Haverstead bets big, it may be hard for him to realize his equity. But it isn't that big of a bet. Expect Wangberg to stay in the hand either with a call or a raise. And does just check call to bring the pot up to 2.6 million. The seven of spades on the turn does not connect with Wangberg, so it's Haverstadt still in the lead with his aces, and Wangberg does check again. Haverst Haverstadt in a tough spot after Wangberg called that flop. May feel he's being trapped. However, Wangberg would be calling with a lot of jack tens, etc. And Haverstad, not afraid at all, showing no fear of betting 2.6 million a pot size bet. Now Wangberg is being put to the test. He would need to get lucky if he gets involved here. He would need a fortuitous river card. Does have both does have a spade flush draw on top of his top pair. He may not realize that potential two pair is live as well. He may not even think that his flush draw might be live, but there's so many different possibilities. Will Wangberg stay in the hand? He will still have a healthy stack if he decides to give up. 
Love the pressure that Haberstadt is putting on. And I like that Langberg is taking his time. The pot is earning more than what either player had to start the hand. Langberg counting out his chips. Is he going to come in for the full 3.9? Is he thinking about calling the 2-6? Or still contemplating what his plan might be? I would really love to get in the head of Wangberg right at this particular moment. He is still counting his chips. It is a bit of a spot for him as well because Martinussen, uh, who isn't in the hand, has a shorter stack than what Langberg would have behind if he does fold. And as we earlier mentioned, the payout jumps are big at this moment. The final three locking up 16,516, but the final two locking up 27,214. And then from there, the winner tonight walking home with 50,346 euros. Langberg is out of his seat. Staring at the board, possibly trying to figure out how Haverstead is betting the pot here. He'd be drawing very thin to a set, for example. He doesn't have that straight draw. He just has that plush draw. He hasn't, his two pair draw is live, but Wangberg may be throwing that out the window too. But Haverstead putting the pressure on since the beginning of this hand. giving up on the hand, saving his chips for another day. After inching close to the chip lead, he will, if he wants that chip lead back, it'll have to be another hand. While Haberstadt puts a gap between him and everybody else, has more than half the chips in play. So far, not so good for Wangberg, even though we don't see all the cards yet. The five board deuce it does hold the button. Haverstad may try to put pressure on Martinussen with the 6652. If he is going to play this, I would more expect a race than a call, but maybe he's uh, just going to give up on it right here. And good thing for him he does, because Martinussen was going nowhere with his ace king 9 9. I imagine pretty soon we will have the technology where we can have the Norwegian translated into English automatically in real time in subtitles. But we could tell that the players are very friendly. We do not know what they were saying there, though. Some of you might if you understand Norwegian. 
this American soul living in Lithuania for many years can barely understand English and sort of understand Lithuanian to some degree, maybe a little Spanish and Italian, but not so much Norwegian at this point in time, even though I do have many Norwegian friends. But never mind that. Martinussen limping, his short stack, Langberg checking back, his 10 10 5 3 double suited. And Martinussen will be first to act on the deuce jack five flap. Langberg connecting with his five, his tens are still better, is technically ahead. Looks like he will be calling a bet of 275 by Martinussen. Martinussen also has a wheel draw, but now both Martinussen and Wankberg have a flush draw on that six of spades turn. Martinussen's is better, so with the spade on the river, assuming they make it that far, things could get dicey for Wankberg. Let's see how Martinussen plays this hand. I can see him playing this in many different paths at a position. Martinussen taking his time. There is a lot in stake. And does check Wangberg betting 400,000. I think we will see Martinussen stick around either with the call or a raise. He is just calling. And nearly 2 million in the pot with one card to come. And the Eight of Diamonds completing the board on the river. Wangberg ahead with this tens, but it's hard for him to know that. So if Martinussen can just get his stack in, it would work, but it's very difficult to do. He doesn't have any diamonds in his hand, neither does Wangberg. Does not have that 7-9 even for that straight, or even the 7-4 for that matter. But Martinussen recognizing the only way to uh, get some chips here is to bet and should steal the pot away from Wangberg. Wangberg snap holds the best hand, but very hard for him to call as we mentioned. And well played by Martinussen. We said he wasn't being the most aggressive player at the table, but wrestling that pot away from Wangberg. And it's up to 3.7 million in chips, and now Wangberg is the short stack among the three players. Another Another dealer change and this time lines up. När vi ser på heads up turneringar, det är gärna de bästa som är med till slut och Simon du är en av dem. Jag är hyggligt att du menar det. Det får ju bara statistiken visa eventuellt då. Så långt har jag haft flyt och spelat bra så. Vi ser fortsätter så kanske det kan gå hela vägen. Og Espen sitter og ser litt på den heads-up-duellen som startet litt før dere også. Det er jo virkelig sterke travere innenfor heads-up som kommer med til slutt, men deg selv, anser du deg selv for å være en spesielt sterk heads-up-spiller? Nei, ikke egentlig. Jeg har spilt veldig mye heads-up back in the days, men jeg er ikke veldig oppdatert på moderne heads-up-strategi. Jeg har sett litt på moderne heads-up, og de spiller til den spiller enn hva det vi spilte i 2015, for å si det sånn. Så det er... Ja, ikke noe supersterk, men blant de som er enige i feltet her, så virker det som en solid firer. Alle sammen er sånn bra og god. Jeg tror ikke det er noen heads-up-spesialister som spiller fulltid heads-up, men alle sammen har sikkert ordentlig et kontroll, type. Men det er jo ganske fascinerende at da på det andre bordet så har vi en som har vunnet NM to ganger i heads-up, og vi har også en annen som er årets online-Norgesmester i heads-up. Det er ikke tilfeldig det her, Simen. Nei, det er nok ikke tilfeldig, det er ikke det. Men det er jo mye... Det er mye flaks i heads-up-poker også, da. Hvis to gode spillere møtes, så er det rundt 50-50, da. Og hvem er favoritt blant dere nå? Nei, det må jo være Espen, da. Jeg vet ikke. Jeg er faktisk ikke en feiling. Det vil ikke jeg uttale meg om. Men jeg vet jo at i heads-up, hvis to OK-spillere møtes, så er det sjeldent at det er mer enn 55-45, da. I den strukturen vi spiller i dag, i hvert fall. Så, ja, det er jo mye opp til tilfellighet av hvilke kort man får. 
Ja. Lykke til, gutter. Tusen takk. Nå skal vi bevege oss over hit, for det er den duellen som vi startet litt tidligere. Det vi ser her er jo at Oskar ser ut til å ha fått en ganske god fordel, fordi du har fortsatt et liv igjen bak her. Ja, nå hadde vi aces mot Kings nettopp. Jeg hadde aces sånn av Kings all in. Så da fikk jeg doblinga. Jeg prøvde akkurat, jeg har en argumentasjon om at heads up ikke er flaks, men jeg hører de hendene som blir delt ut her, så kanskje det blir litt coin flips likevel. Det blir jo av og til det. Får man et stort par som king, så er man jo ofte med all in for flop, så... Jeg kan i hvert fall si at jeg var med i heads up, jeg også, da jeg røk ut, så hadde jeg motstander ned i 3000 på siste livet, så det er veldig mye spillerom fortsatt. And we are back. The semifinals of the heads up is about to take place as well. As you saw, Espen Ulden Jorstad, the 2022 WSOP main event champion, is in the final four. We hope to be able to commentate that after the conclusion of this exciting PLO championship affair at the Norwegian championship here at Kart Casino Bratislava. Wangberg folds it over to Haverstad, who still has the chip lead with the ace-king, 9-8 from the small blind. Blinds have now gone up to 100,000, 250,000. It's already 600,000 now in the pot before any action happens. Does fire in a pot-sized bet, and Martinussen likes what he sees and is making the call for about a third of his stack. <coughs> no, he is jamming all in for 2.2 million. Haverstadt quickly calling. We could have some fireworks right here, right now. Martinus is saying he needs some help, and he does. Bring help. Bring help. Bring help. Let's see if Martinussen can stay alive or if he will bow out in third place for 16,516 euros. We have some drama now. Out. Uh, we want suck out. He is hoping for a suck out, apparently. And who <laughs> went in this spot? The 3 6 4 flop. Martinussen does connect with that four, now has a gut shot. You could see he is ahead in the hand, and it's Haverstad that needs a suck out going forward. Needing a king or an eight. And the ace of spades on the turn improves Martinussen further to two pair, but it gives Haverstad some more outs to a king eight or six. And it's the ace of clubs on the river for Martinussen to double up. He got the suck out he was looking for. Not Sometimes only stays look, yeah. alive, but now takes the lead. And you hear him in English this time. Sometimes lucky. Amazing turn up events. Both players with premium hands there. A bit of a setup. Terry Weinberg would have liked to probably have seen Martinussen go out and be heads up for the title against Thomas Haverstad. But instead, we still remain yeah, three-handed. And we get a nice view of the trophy, but also those slippers. Those slippers look quite comfortable. That bottle of champagne looks ready to be cracked open fairly soon as well. And with so many possibilities in PLO, we will have more fireworks to come. Haverstad 
who had the chip lead for quite some time, was unable to hold to eliminate Martinussen and have a substantial advantage in heads up play. But meanwhile, we're still three handed, and Martinussen, instead of hitting the rail, has taken the chip lead. And gives Langberg a walk with his King Jack 10 3 double suited. Langberg didn't seem too thrilled about that. But instead of losing 500,000 chips between the ante and big blinds, he does gain 100,000 chips from the small blind for a 600,000 chip swing. I put all this for when I was going to install it, install it with Kong and with Flushingbrag, with all the parents. But that's what we already know. That's great. I think it's going to be a little bit. And Martin Ursson with the chip lead on the button with the King 10 10 7. Does look like he wants to play this. And it does look like he's switching up his style a little bit now that he has the chip lead. A raise up to 700,000. That at least should get Weinberg out of the way with this Queen 4 4 deuce. Terry Weinberg does fold. And Haverstad also not with the strongest of hands. Let's see how he wants to play this though. Thomas Haverstad was mixing it up quite a lot when he had the chip lead. He did just take a bad beat recently, but does give up on his hand. And Martinussen able to take down the pot and extend his lead. will be folding the button here. If not, he's only opening because he is on the button. And I say that as he's reaching for chips, but this isn't a good hand at all, the Jack 553. Haverstadt's hand, though, is much better with the King Jack 1010. Let's see if he three bets or if he calls, oh, he would be out of position with the call. He can get most of his stack in if he wants right here. And he does, he announces the pot. It's a raise to a little more than two million. And gets both players out of the way, gets some breathing room. Earned 1.1 million in chips. <laughs> and the button was thrown at him, but it was a friendly toss. It just bounced funny off the table. Even the dealer getting a laugh out of that. I have to move down to what is my event first day of No Limit Texas Hold'em. Det begynner å dra seg mot slutten av denne dagen. De er på de siste hendene. Det er noen som har hatt en bedre dag enn andre her så langt. Nå kaster den, så nå kan vi også få en prat. God dag. God dag, ja. Jeg ser at du sitter på en massiv mengde chips her. Vi kan se her borte at det er... Hvor mye er det vi egentlig teller? Vi er ganske tett på 500. Og du startet med 100? Det stemmer. Hva er det som har gjort at du har klart å bygge så godt i dag? Nei, jeg har hatt gode hender og akkurat vært litt bedre enn motstanderne, så det er det som har gjort det. Bor du i Haugesund? Det stemmer det, ja. Og hvordan er nivået her kontra hjemme? Nei, nivået i Haugesund er ganske bra, men det er det her også, så 
<laughs> så ja. Det er i hvert fall god stemning. Det er et, et av mange bord som spilles for øyeblikket. Jeg ser nå at det er 118 spillere igjen av de 207 som startet, så snittet det er jo fortsatt under 200, og det er fullt mulig å komme seg til dag 2 med ganske god shape hvis du sitter med startstack. So we just got a peek down at the main bam, event, bam. which began at day 1A today. And we're hopping back into the action. Haverstad now has some chips back. He was down low, so he must have won a few pots here, including this one with the ace-queen jack-9 taking down the hand pre-flop once again. So the three players are likely tight on chips, but the blinds being as high as they are, and us missing a couple hands while we took a peek down at the main event. We will need to see during the next hand. Mm -hmm. Tanker du på noe, eller? Thomas. Tanker du på noe, eller er det...? Ja. Det er jo, vi kan jo få oss bare. Vi kan jo få oss bare, så det er. Martin Usson with an absolute monster on the button here. Ace, king, queen, ten. It isn't double suited, but still monstrous. Nonetheless, one of the best hands on PLO and on the button, it makes it even more powerful. Because the button should be opening wide. Does indeed open. It's hard to tell for how much. It's the first time. Langberg is being reminded to put in the box. He's been pretty good about that throughout the final table. Very good time. And it is a race to 550, so a little more than a min race by Martinus and Langberg. With the queen at eight deuce, has two diamonds in his hand to the queen. Not enough for him, and I don't think this will be enough for Haverstad. So Martinusen able to extend his lead with all three players bunched closely together. This is anybody's match. With 50,346 euros on the line, along with the coveted trophy and bragging rights, at least for the year about winning this 800 euro buy-in event. <laughs> Weinberg with the King 10-6-4. Congratulations to Thomas. He is on the button. He will be in the big blind next hand, so he may want to open this even though it doesn't seem super strong. That is indeed opening for 600,000. So far so good, Haverstad is likely not to play as 9543. However, things have all changed here with Martin Usen waking up with the king, queen, jack, nine. Has two hearts in his hands to the king as well is making the call and will play this hand out of position with already 1.55 million in the pot. And not the flop that either player really wanted to see. Martinson checks now if Weinberg finds a way to continue here. We'll take it down, he does bet. 1.55 million, so he did bet a pot size bet, leaving himself just crumbs behind. Must be relieved that his opponent had nothing on that flop to steal it away. And really, now all three players just inches apart of each other, just a few big points separating first and third places. This has been a thrilling conclusion of the PLO Championship here at Kart Casino, Bratislava. It folds around to Martinusen here with the King 10 A4.
does just complete the blinds and now Wangberg with a pretty big hand I wouldn't be surprised to see him raise it up with the ace king queen six does declare a pot size raise and does take it down right there and Wangberg picks up the pot up to 4.3 million in chips It's been absolutely thrilling to commentate this event. Lots of good poker, lots of excitement. The Norwegians came here to play. All three remaining players hungry for that title. Never mind the 50,000 euro top prize. Martinusson on the button with the ace nine, six deuce. The ace is suited with the six to the spades. And Ted opens up indeed the 600,000. Now Wangberg with the 9963. Let's see if he gets involved or not. Not this time, folks. And Haverstad will likely at least call, if not raise here with the ace-queen 5-4. It is rainbow for him though, so no potential flush draws for him. Still a pretty hand in three-handed play. Does indeed call. And now both players with about double the pot in their stacks. Oh my, Haverstad flopping Broadway on the 10 King Jack rainbow flop. Basically the nuts at this point. It is the nuts probably at the end as well Does check and Martinusen reaching for chips. He's going to make an ill-timed bet here It is small though of 350,000 probably just trying to see where his opponent is at Does have a backdoor flush draw. That's about it. That's why he still has 4% equity Haverstad looking like he's thinking about whether to call with his weak holding, but we know that he is strong and does just call. Hoping out of position that Martinusen will fire again, regardless of the turn. And it's a two of hearts on the turn. So still the nuts for Haverstad. Is Martinusen, who's now drawing dead, going to try to stab again? Or bet big, hoping to steal it away? If his opponent doesn't have the nuts and he bets big or even like a queen nine type of hand or a set with some draws or some hearts, a big bet would get the job done, but we see it's not gonna get the job done here. Oh my, he does bet the pot. Haverstad all in. Martin Usen will fold despite there only being a little bit left, understanding that he was likely drawing dead and he was and saying poor timing and it was an ill-timed jam or ill-timed pot size bet and Thomas Haverstad now has more than half the chips in play yes. been loving every moment of this three-handed matchup. I enjoyed the rest of the final table too, but especially three-handed, it's been so exciting. And now blinds have gone up to 150,000, 300,000 with a 300,000 big blind to ante. We will see a champion crowned soon enough. Blinds can't go up that much further. You can see Wangberg is down to 14 big blinds despite having a healthy stack of 4.2 million. He does like to open buttons, but this is a little bit too late for him. Meanwhile, Haverstad is in the small blind with the 10 9 7 3. Does have a big lead at this point, but that can quickly evaporate. Just takes a double up 
of one of his opponents. Haverstadt raising the pot to 900,000. And Martin Usson, who is down to just 720,000. It's kind of a rough spot for him. This is a bit of crap, but he can't really afford to keep afford to keep holding. Yep. Whatever. And Martin Usson just calling with 120,000 back, so he's effectively all in. That's what I'm all in. I'm gonna pull out. You could see he doesn't have that many chips behind. He does have the My Little Pony, but that doesn't count in this circumstance. And doesn't really have that much going on here, but is going to have to call for just 120,000 and hope for the best. And Martinusen is at risk. We could be heads up soon. Haverstad has the open ender, but is ahead anyway with Martinusen not connecting. Both players switching each other. Good luck. And Martin Usson, who just recently had the chip lead, needs a five or a four. Perhaps some more outs can open up on a different kind of turn. And it's the ace of clubs on the turn. So Martin Usson now can also snag a two for the wheel. Lots of tension leading up to the Five of Hearts River. Martin Usen gets there with the wheel. We are still at three-handed play after Martin Usen gets there with the A542 against 10-9-7-3. Haverset still with the chip lead. Meanwhile, Terry Weinberg, who is standing up, uh, wishes he was heads up at the moment because of the pay jump and because of the better chance of winning the title but it's been back and forth quite a lot during three-handed play, quite exciting. I'm happy to see this matchup continue. And I'm also looking forward to an exciting heads-up affair. That My Little Pony certainly does approve. Wants to stay on the table a little bit longer as well. Here's a look at the stack sizes. Haverstead still with about half the chips in play. And a look at the payouts and the steep jumps. I'm always one level behind in my head. Clock goes so fast. Ever said, folding the button, and probably good that he did, considering what Martin Usen woke up with in the small bind. Ace, ace, queen, deuce, double suited. The dream PLO at him, but also a dream PLO hand, despite the two being in there. I expect to see a raise here Nine. to 900,000. And indeed it is, a pot size bet. Weinberg has a decision to make with this king, eight, seven, six. His spades aren't even high, but he doesn't know that. Is he going to find a way to play this hand? The equities are surprisingly pretty close. It just goes to show you how much different PLO is from the limit hold'em. And why in cash games it's mostly a post spot play. <coughs> But Weinberg indeed calling in position with 2.1 million in the pot. Six, six, eight flop. So Weinberg flopping that full house. This could be showers for Marnus, and it's going to be very difficult for him to get away, which is 1.4 million in a stack. Very often you would see him jam, but he does check. Maybe that will save him, but I don't see how. And Wangberg checking back, disguising, and improving to an even better full house with sixes full of kings now. And Martinusen down to just two outs. He needs an ace on the river. But I expect the chips to go in now on the turn if they didn't go in on the flap. 
Olin. And indeed, Martin Usen jams. You can't blame him at all. It's a huge cooler for him. And he sees what he's up against. He knows that it's likely heading over to the locker room. But he still has a chance for a miracle if he can hit one of those red aces on the river. A short while ago, Martinusen was able to grab the chip lead, but now is down to just two outs for his tournament life with three players left. And the two of hearts completing the board on the river. Langberg winning the hand, taking the chip lead. Meanwhile, Martinusen out in third place for 16,516 euro. The final two players each locking up 27,214 euro with tonight's winner. Going home with 50,346. Well played, Ted Martinusen. It's time for your interview. And you can see, despite Langberg having the lead, it's basically even stacks. Gratulerer med en fantastisk tredje plass. Jo, takk. Det var veldig mange situasjoner der, og etter at du har overlevd noen, så tenkte du at det var en stor mulighet for å komme tilbake. Men hva slags følelse sitter du igjen med etter dette finalbordet? Nei, det var jo en berg- og dalbane. Det var det. Det var det for ganske mange. Det var en del spennende spots, det må jeg si. Og så var jeg heldig i en del all-ins. Det var jeg. Klarer du å være fornøyd med tredjeplass akkurat nå? Hvis du sier ja, så lyger du egentlig til deg selv, for du er egentlig aldri fornøyd med mindre du vinner. Men hvis du ser på helheten, så er du fornøyd med tredjeplass. Men sånn som når vi satt og hadde ganske lik stekk og var treveis igjen, så kan du ikke si at den er fornøyd. Det kan du ikke. Blant de to som er igjen nå, hvem er det du holder som favoritt? Jeg holder Thomas som favoritt. It's been pretty exciting. situasjonen litt annen, men vi får et godt eksempel på det her. Det eneste er at Hansen jo var favoritt før her, og da vil noen tenke, ja, men skal man ikke spille kongeparet sitt da? Svaret på det er ja, fordi han kan ikke helt være sikker på det, og sånn at det er ACM-sprang på premiestigen. Men nå skal vi konsentrere oss om denne, for det er Marius Johansen som er i fare for å bli slått ut her nå. Som vi ser, se på Ekbutin her. Det er 50-50. Sier grafikken. Knekt i døra. Nier ved siden av. Så Johansen nå med en rap til street her. Han har ikke noen tier. Nei, det har han ikke. Nei, det er ikke noen tier der, nei. Det er vel jeg så ikke den, ja. Så ikke noen rap. Der, nå er det en tier. Nå derimot. Ja. Og Haverstad drar dødt. Johansen kan ikke slås ut. Der så han det selv også. Nikket anerkjennende. Og... Spiller da på 1 million 270 tusen, og Havelstad ned på 3, nei det stemmer ikke, nei, glem det, sidepått på 1,2 millioner, 1,5, nesten 1,6 har Havelstad noe smått, det er litt i rand der, jeg bare tenkte. Den er litt misvisende, den å spille sidepått mot seg selv der. Ja, den minner man, den sidepåten. Pleier det, ja. Tror det er ganske riktig å passe. Hansen da, som sitter 
etter å begynner å bli litt travelt for Thomas Haverstad i bildet her også, faktisk. Ja, 1,3 millioner. Så klipper igjen. ST76 for Johansen. Man kan jo legge litt merke til tendenser også. Nå etter at de kom tilbake av Pausa og Blindberg og Topp, så har det vært veldig passivt. Og da har vi jo sett... Ja, Martinussen har jo spilt opp fra tidlig posisjon to ganger og fått rundkast. Vi så at Stadia har gjort det en gang. Og nå ser vi at det kastes mye. Jeg ville tenkt hvis jeg hadde en sterk gjæsøkning. Altså, 15. Ja, kanskje litt mindre også. 12. Kanskje prøve et oppspill. Så må han egentlig kaste hvis man får kontra. Men det virker som det er litt sånn vente til noen klincher i leken nå, at vi får ut en spiller til. Ja, men Ted Martinusen da, som prøver seg her, han hadde jo stor helm i nettet, plukket ned to potter uten motstand, og det var nok til å få litt avstand fra han og ned til Haverstad og Johansen, som bare sitter på 12 bigs. Ja, men nå hadde han en høyst legitim hånd også, som han var forberedt på å syne Stai med, når Stai går over med S9-5 med to, Vangberg kaster i store blind. Da er det Stai som er i fare for å rykke ut, men det har han vært mange ganger før. Skal han overleve også denne? Dette er Martinussen. Han vil fortsatt ta tilbake nesten 30 ganger i Storeblind. Skulle han tape. Men jeg ser at han er favoritt, selv om Stai da har S her. Vi dør av to, da blir døra avknekt. Floppe fullt hus, det er jo greit. Da er det lang vei å gå for Stai. Men han har ingen vei å gå, faktisk. Nei, han har ikke noe vinner i det hele tatt. Lang vei å gå til kasjeren, tenker jeg på. Ja, han får jo heldigvis med seg litt trøstepremier da. 6.363 euro. Jeg synes det er veldig... Han får veldig fortjent applaus også Øystein Stai. Det hadde vært veldig interessant å se Øystein Stai spille PLO med en spillbar stack for ferdighetene. Det kan vi ikke betvile, og bare alle ting til at han syter seg inn på knappen der. At han vil ha posisjonen etter flopp med to par på hånda. Så uansett så begge deler ville vært bra spilt av Martinussen og det vi var inne på at han jo vel er den som har vært mest utgående etter at de kom tilbake fra pause. Ja, uten tvil også. Han er jo oppe i 3,3 millioner og har en soleklar andreplass forløpig. Morten Klein har jo ramlet ned til 1,6 som vi ser her. Han har en tredjeplass, men det er lite avstand igjen fra han til Thomas Haverstad og Marius Johansen. Plutselig på nesten 4,000 av Martin Husen. Fortsatt. Da som det sier man bare 5,3 millioner i første mann, men over 5 millioner. Det klarer å prøve seg igjen. Knekt, knekt 6,3 denne gang. Tror Klein. Det virker som at han nå vet ikke helt hva som skjer, for nå blir starthendene dårligere og dårligere, og han prøver hardere og hardere på en måte. Vi får komme tilbake til dette her, for Vangberg har jo sitt Hansen går med konge, konge, 10, 9, det er masse ekstra mat i midten etter at Klein spilte opp, og Vangberg synte oppspillet. Da er det tilbake til Klein, han må jo bekymre seg for, skal vi se, nei, det er ikke tilbake. Har Klein allerede kastet? Nei, han måtte... Ja, Klein hadde allerede kastet han. Og det fungerte jo optimalt for Hansen som ikke engang fikk syn på all-innen sin. Snakk om å treffe med timing da, etter at Klein gjorde litt sånn... Vi var jo i ferd med å snakke om det litt sånn shady i åpen her. Ekstremt lus vil det kanskje mange si, men... Og så synte Vangberg uten det i tankene at han var til akkurat det vi snakket om her tidligere med litt passivitet og passivt og hvis noen oppdager det så kan de åpne og kanskje få rundkast og så har han bare hatt dårlig timing på det to ganger på rad 10, 10, 6, 5 UTG ellers så kan det bare være det at nå er det go big og go home ja, nå er det fjerde hånd på rad her og vi går et knep ned for hver gang, dampar, nektepar, tiepar. Det er 
Det er tydelig at han bare at, altså kan være at han har fanget opp det at ordet er veldig passivt, og bare bestemt seg for at nå skal vi kjøre, men så bare fungerer det ikke for det hele tatt. Kan fortsatt fungere nå, men Hansen, han er nyrik og har konge damen med knekt ni. Aha. Det er en sut. Johansen har SS 99. Ikke noe sut der. Det er Fadugi, andre regnbuens farger. Men det er S-bar. Og det er uh, race, riktig nok tidlig race. Men det gir jo egentlig ja, enda større insentiv for Johansen med tanke på at han uh, blokker Aces, og hvis han er oppe mot for eksempel den mest konge variant, så er den dominert, så er det alltid dette her med noen gata. Nå så vi at det ble rastkast uh, der fra Klein, tilbake til Hansen. Litt tricky spot her nå, han har 635 000 bak her, det er uh, drøyt 11 ganger soreblind. Og han uh, syner. Skal vi nok spille for turneringslivet til Hansen? Det vil overraske meg veldig hvis ikke det skjer. Som også er en ufattelig viktig pot for Johansens del. Nå vet vi jo, det er litt uheldig der for Hansen. Vi vet at Martin Klein kaster to tire. Det blokker jo da Hansen sine stridmuligheter betraktelig. Her kommer floppen. Et nier der for Johansen som... Ja, han uh, flopper jo fullt hus i hele verden her. Ja, det er det jeg sier. Og, da, han har ikke fått ball til gang Hansen, og du kommer inn... Altså, han har 1 prosent har han. Ja, ja. So you're er det, telling er me there's a chance. <laughs> ja, det er en uh, sjeldent uh, lei uh, situasjon å være i for uh, Hansen, uh, selvfølgelig. Jeg vet ikke hva det er mulig. Jeg begynner å bli sliten. Hva er den ene prosenten av Kittil? Jeg må tenke hva han er. Ja. Welcome back. We are here for the conclusion of the PLO Championship at the Norwegian Championship at Card Casino, Bratislava. It has been quite the exciting matchup. We are down to the final two players, each locking up 27,214 euro, with the winner going home with much more, 50,348 euros, and the trophy and the honors of being the winner. It's only appropriate that we have Terry Weinberg and Thomas Haberstad as the final two players as they began the unofficial final table of seven players as the top two players and it should be an interesting heads up affair with both players able to show aggression at the right times and uh, the first hand uh, wasn't very aggressive neither player having anything to be aggressive with it was a flim pot nobody hitting anything uh wangberg uh happy though to uh to bet this in position after uh Haverstad checks. Haverstad does have a 10 high flush draw, but it is a paired board. Let's see how he reacts facing a bet of 350,000. And Haverstad raising it up to 975,000. Wangberg should quickly fold. If not quickly, he will indeed fold. He doesn't have anything in his hand. No point in bluffing in this spot. He's counting out some chips, though. Maybe he has a plan being in position for later streets. Very interesting. I thought we would see a fold. I'm not quite sure what Weinberg is calling with. He's more calling uh, in position. And we can see he's not far behind. But it's a very dangerous play. Not only was it just a call, it was a three-bet wipe for Weinberg. Weinberg making a move and this is the aggression that we were talking about i thought it was a call and wondering what's happening and now wangberg with a massive lead after taking down that pot he was ahead but no way to realize that and his opponent had the draws okay amazing situational awareness there by terry wangberg 
and now is in control for the title against Thomas Haverstad. Lightbrick being asked to be moving over one more seat. Both players in a similar spot on opposite ends of the table. And meanwhile, it's Thomas Haverstad's turn to be on the button. This time with the king, Jack, three deuce. He has hearts to the king. It looks like he's getting ready just to uh, call. He completes the uh, the blinds. Weinberg is out of position, but with the king 10, 8, 5. I don't expect them to put more money in now, but I did not expect that raise before either. And it does indeed check to see a flop with 900,000 in the middle. And both players hitting a piece of this 3-5 king board with two diamonds. Wangberg with top two. Haberstadt with top and bottom. Wangberg betting the pot right away. Now is Haberstadt gonna come in over the top? He has a strong hand. It's hard to think that his opponent is ahead. His opponent can have many draws on this board. Haverstad is indeed all in it. And Wangberg just as quickly calls, and we could be over before we started here. Haverstad does have some hope. He needs a three or a jack or some other combination of cards. You could see he's not super far behind, but he is still a seven to three underdog. Oh my God. Right away fireworks. Wow. I was expecting to see some back and forth and heads up. But we are on our second hand of heads up play. Both players talking to the rail. Haverstadt needs some help. You can't blame his move at all. Two pairs should be strong there. The seven parts on the turn makes Wangberg a four to one favorite to win the title with one more card to come. And the two of spades, Terry Wangberg wins the title of the PLO six max championship for 50,346 while Haverstad well played 27,214 euro for second place. You can hear the applause I had an absolute blast watching these legends of Norwegian poker battle it out on the final table. You could see Frode Fagerle giving the champion congratulations. But once again, a massive congratulations to Terry Wangberg. We will be back very soon with some heads up action with a heads up affair down to just four hopefuls, including 2022 WSOP main event champion Espen Uden or Jorstad. Thank you very much. This is Jason Glatzer and see you soon.